Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 29 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp, aka Mr. B Sharp on the ones and twos, threes, four, the fives and the six, and all that good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Uh appreciate everybody for uh checking out the interview last week with the homie, Mr. Jewel Taylor Main. And Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have some special guests on the show today. I had one of them on here one time, and then I had the other one on here one time. Now I got both of them on here. We got the full squad on here, but we going to get to them in just a second, ladies and gentlemen. First off, he's wearing the same cap as me, but he got the dad hat. Mr. DeHaven Moore, ladies and gentlemen. You're on mute, sir. All right, man, you know what time it is, man. I'm back in the building. You know what I'm saying? It's been two weeks, but I'm back. We ready to get it popping, man. Let's do it. Are you ready, sir? Are you really ready? really ready man <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> my main man had audio issues before the show my dog my big homie Tez what's going on dog what's going on fellas we got that all cleaned up hoping y'all can hear me loud and clear yeah definitely <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen they in the building you see them at the bottom ladies and gentlemen but they not at the bottom they at the top Paul, but ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> y'all already see not one, but two. Ladies and gentlemen, the Water Cooler Talk podcast is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. They yes, are sir, in the yes, sir, building, yes, sir, Mr. Marcus yes, Fitt and Mr. Nick Frazier, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It took 29 episodes to get them both on here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep counting until they both got on here. We both had them on here each time. And I'm glad to have them on here today, man. Thank you for blessing the show, as always, gentlemen. Proud supporters of the pod and definitely a proud supporter of theirs. They're doing big things. And y'all make sure you go over there and subscribe to their channel because they are doing great things and they're going to continue to do great things. So be on the lookout now. I'm telling you, don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> so we're going to start off this way, man. The NFL all season just been, it's been crazy moves after crazy moves. Terrence even had to point me out and say uh, about, um, Justin Fields to the Steelers because I almost forgot about that. <laughs> but it, it's just crazy news after crazy news, man. You don't know the NFL draft coming up. I just want to know what y'all think, just y'all thoughts of the uh, all season so far with teams, with some of these pickups since you guys went on uh, last week. Just tell me how y'all teams are doing. I'm going to start with uh, – I'll go ahead and start with Mr. Buffalo Bills. You just uh, had to. You, you had to. Huh, the you choke had artist. To. You had the, to. We ain't going to talk about Washington right now. But, uh, yeah, yeah. we'll we talk about him in a minute. But go, we, you're the our star. Front office, our front office right now is tripping. But, you know, I respect <laughs> their moves. I respect their moves. Uh, they let go of T. White. Poor you. I don't respect that. But, you know. I don't know what's going on in Buffalo, man. I, I'm scared we let go of Gabe Davis, but we got Curtis Samuel. Uh, but, you know, man, hey, check with me midway through the season. I'll tell you how I feel right now. Man. I forgot y'all did let go. Once you said that, though, no, I just realized he uh, did go to Jasmine. I was like, damn, y'all did let go of the game. And I was thinking, like, where he went. And I remember. Jordan, Jordan Poirier, man, he went to, he went to the Dolphins. Yeah, man, y'all, y'all, y'all need to step it up, man. Y'all got, you know. got Curtis, and 
When you pay Von Miller, when you, pay, when you pay Von Miller all that unnecessary money, this is this the outcome of of that's the fallout. Mm. Mm. Just for him to come there and get hurt and and, and play on. That's not, that's money. not his fault, man. Hey, whatever you say, man. The best the best ability is availability. Y'all know mm. that. Right. Facts. Mm. I don't want to hear that. That Von Miller. Super Bowl <laughs> MVP <laughs> Von Miller. Future Hall hey, of Famer. Hey, hey, Aaron Rodgers won a Super Bowl back then too. He won that long ago for Von. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Whatever. All Nick, right. What what <laughs> okay. what how your team doing or how uh, you loving all season? What you love, some moves that you love, man. Some you don't tell like. You, tell you this, man. NFL offseason has been interesting, to say the least, man. It's been really interesting, man. Still trying to understand this whole situation with uh, Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, man. I'm trying to understand this. I don't, I don't get it. But, you know, some people say he he's grooming him. To, they groomed him to be the next guy. I'm like, he already was a starting quarterback, but it is what it is. Um, I think it's this, man. He should have stayed in Chicago. I'm, I will live and die on that hill. That man should have stayed in Chicago, man. They still could have drafted the number one <laughs> overall pick. Man, they still could have drafted the number one overall pick. This man still got a year left on his contract. They can pick up his fifth year option next year if they want to. If not, they can trade the man. And it, it, if he doesn't pan out, and you still got the number one pick from this year that they could have kept. I don't know, man. It's, it's a bunch of stuff that is it could happen. I mean, I understand that a new regime came in, new GM and everything like that. But man, but then you go out and then you get receivers what he needed. You go get them off. You go get an offensive tackle. Then you go get two more receivers to add with DJ Moore. But he didn't have last season. But now you want to get at the Caleb Williams and make him the savior of Chicago, I guess, when whatever they decide to draft. Man, I don't know, man. I still think Justin Fields should be in Chicago. It is what it is. But shout out to the Panthers, baby. That's what I'm talking about. We sharing up that offensive line. Superstar quarterback. Bryce Sean. He'll be straight. We'll be straight this year. We'll be straight. We just need an offensive line. We got us a little receiver. Maybe we'll get something else in the draft. So we'll be straight. We coming, though. We coming. Man, y'all right. need a right. whole lot, man. Y'all ain't y'all ain't did nothing in my eyes to make sure my we boy got to see. We got the offensive line <laughs> secured. <laughs> the offensive line is gonna be straighter this year. I ain't saying it's gonna be the best, but it's gonna be straighter. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. I ain't seen nothing. Nan receiver go to that man yet. You got Deontay Johnson. You got Deontay Johnson. Yes. Then he leave hey. the league and drops. Hey, <laughs> like, that don't boy care. can't catch we don't nothing. Care. <laughs> It's something we can make it work. Hey, hey we need to be hey, hey, it, hey, it better than Adam Thielen. We need hey, that's true. Hill. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's we need do catch the electric, man. But boy, man, they they <laughs> made my hey, they they got a lot. I don't even uh uh-uh. <laughs> bring my spirits down. Don't bring my spirits down. Don't bring I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Right now. I'm trying to be happy. Let's go, baby. Woo! Keep I... pounding, baby. Keep pounding. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the thing about, hey, Nick, the thing about it is, you and him in the same boat. He talking to the yin but y'all in the same boat. Hold on, hold on. We'll get to me in a second, sir. We'll get to me in a second. We'll get to me in a second. <laughs> we'll in a second. But, first, but first, I love to just mess with somebody on the pod, man. He went on last week, man. The man is a big old Houston Texans fan from the H-Town and all that. Man. The man wanted Mike Evans, didn't get Mike Evans. The man mm-hmm. wanted Saquon Bar- Barkley, mm-hmm. didn't get Saquon. But, mm-hmm. but you got Joe Mixon. I think that was a good uh, pickup by y'all and you signed him. Yeah, uh, I actually so like Joe Mixon. Think. I actually, I actually like the Joe Mixon signing. Uh, I was pretty heartbroken when Mike Evans didn't come back home. I was I was real upset about that one, man. But uh, and then not getting Saquon, but then when we bounced back and got Mixon, I was like, okay, all right, I see what they're doing. Um, adding Mixon with uh with my boy Pierce is gonna be a nice you know nice running game. I think a nice consistent running game. We re-signed Noah Brown, re-signed Dalton Schultz. I'm very happy about that. I'm glad they did not let him walk. 
Uh, I like Daniel Danielle Hunter. That's how he said from uh, the Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. Vikings. That defense. That end. was a yeah. that was a really really good mm-hmm. pickup for our defense. He gave like fifty mil, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we, we but dropped the bag on him. Forty nine. They million. got the money. Shit, they ain't yeah. got nobody to pay for a long yeah. time. Pretty much. Uh, uh, they signed Jeff Okuda. Uh, very Ronnie underrated Johnson. pickup by y'all. Huh. Very underrated pickup by y'all. I mm-hmm. agree with you, Sean. We uh, I think they did a really good, a really good, you know, really good pickups. Uh, we who's this? Aziz Al Shahir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three year yeah. deal, thirty four million. <laughs> so I think uh, I think they did a pretty good, you know, some pretty good signings. I'm still waiting on one more major wide receiver signing, one more offensive weapon for my boy. It's a, it's a few guys still out there in the free agency. Uh, I'm just waiting to see what we do with that or if we can move up in the draft and get somebody that's phenomenal. I don't know yet. Just waiting on that major signing at the wide receiver position. Uh, didn't Calvin really just go to the Titans? Yeah, he just signed with the Titans. Mm-hmm. Why, bro? Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand that one either. <laughs> Nobody like, knows. That's like a graveyard for wide receivers, man. <laughs> hey, my man yeah, got the bag. Big bag. Where did, where did uh Brown go? On paper, they look good, though. You talking about Hollywood? Yeah. They received Ooh, Kansas, Kansas City. City. They went to Kansas City. Kansas City. Ooh. Yeah. You know, nice little pickup by them. Boy. Uh, that, that's all they were waiting on, a receiver that can take, take the top off. Man, hey, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be nasty. They right gonna now. need to if they don't. Well, they uh signed. They got they signed Chris Jones back, which was very necessary. Now they about to they trade franchise, that sneak. They franchise, yeah. They, I thought they franchise tag sneak. None exclusive franchise tag, so he can still talk. Yeah, mm-hmm. I heard. I heard the coach looking. I heard the coach looking at him. Somewhere, Quint really want that to happen. But yeah. I don't uh, see it happening right now. But enough of them bullsh- bullshit teams, man. <laughs> Let's talk about the team on the rise. Team on the rise. <laughs> hey, man, we got all the money outside. I think we have the most cap space of all. No. I y'all think- should. Y'all trade y'all whole defense away before round. <laughs> I think we got the uh, test. The Texans <laughs> probably have more cap space than that, but it don't matter because next month at the end of April, oh boy, we're gonna go ahead and draft the franchise quarterback, future Drake MVP, <laughs> yep, Drake May. Drake May. future Super Bowl MVP. Hey, when they draft Drake May, I'm gonna call Drake, Drake May. Drake Daniels. <laughs> we are drafting Jaden Daniels. Matter of fact, I'm gonna learn his middle name so I can see his middle name now. All I'm gonna tell you for this to be your team, you don't never call y'all situation right because Ed Benham is supposed to be y'all coach right now. Hey, <laughs> no, you must ain't. Hey, man, I, on the last ever since I'm telling you, bro, I'm batting the um, I'm batting the awful right now, man, because I, I was saying, bro, these niggas been doing the opposite of everything, everything you be saying, bro. Everything. I like, bro, so the other way. I like uh, Dan Quinn to show up the defense. Only thing I wish that he did not do was get Cliff Kingsbury, but it is what it is at this Bro, point. Bro, I don't know why y'all hired that man. He ain't I don't nothing. know he either. He did that in Arizona. Nah. He did. Bro, okay. His defense is dated, too. That, that defense he runs is old. You talking about Dan Quinn? Yo. Dan Quinn. Man, that, that defense he ran with the Steelers. That that oh. that cover three, they bombing on that now. Sure. Don't worry, y'all won't bomb on it. But the only thing I do know, hey, we bombed, bombed on everybody, bro. But get what? Everybody can get it. But get what? We about to get our franchise quarterback. That's the only <laughs> thing I know. About to get our if franchise. Y'all, if y'all draft Drake May, bro, I'm gonna call you. And I'm going to cry. I ain't going to even say hello. I'm just be on the phone laughing, crying in your ear. But I'm just hang up. I'm just hang up. <laughs> if you block, oh, if, you, if, if you are blocked, it's a reason. There's no that, sir. How about oh. that? Hey, I respect it. But 
Because I had to block you after that Alabama and Auburn game. Let's, so, it's respect. Listen, listen. Ooh, boy, a lot of folks did. A lot of folks did. I said, boy, if you thought I wasn't going to act a fool that night, after how that game ended, ooh, the best, hold on, you know, you know the best, matter of fact, since we uh, quick off topic real quick, mm-hmm. those were the two best weeks ever. Because I watch y'all uh, podcasts those two weeks, and to see both of y'all said was the most beautiful thing. <laughs> that, y'all was so angry what happened to y'all. Nick was so convinced that Jordan was going to beat the <laughs> hell out of us. And I just really? said, boy, you better pray to God that they beat us. You better pray to God. Or I'm going to say something that day. <laughs> and just to see... Like, oh, like they can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> That's how he was, boy. I said, boy, you you better thank God every day we can win a national championship. I'm telling you, you think Roll Tide Willie is bad, boy. I would have went by. <laughs> <laughs> Roll Tide Willie was bad. Bro, Roll Tide Willie is funny, man. I just follow. I just, him. I just hey, it was funny because he talking about how sad we were, but I want to see him today. Nick Saban retired. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Oh yeah, he was hurry. I know he was hurry. As a matter of fact, I was on the podcast that Wednesday. The day it was beautiful. I was on the podcast. Well, that was a great day. It's, it's, a great all, day. it's all good, man. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, this how you know the man to go when Auburn think they won. They roll up them uh dirty old trees, but we still killing them and recruiting, as always. What y'all still gonna always Hey man, what? Y'all, oh, you, wait, y'all, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro, did, hold on. you want to make this a topic? <laughs> yeah, he really want to make. Come on, man. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about off season right now. We're off season. We're oh, getting there. We're getting. Let me, we get, let me, let me give you my. Let me give you my free agency hey, take, man. So we can we can move in. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to embarrass nobody. So 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 free agency, man. Uh. Uh, the the Justin Fields Russell Wilson thing, uh, I, I I probably got a different opinion on it, bro. I think it was a brilliant move by the Steelers. When oh. you consider the fact that the Broncos is paying like ninety five percent of Russell Wilson's salary, you basically got a veteran quarterback for free, um, and you have no incentive to play him, no financial incentive to play him. So Justin Fields comes in there and balls out in camp. You you're not tied to to uh, Russell Wilson like that. Uh, you know, he, he could be a backup quarterback for you. He could land in the backup role. Whether he wants to or not, you know, that's a different story. But, God, man, I, it, 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 that was some next-level GM in my thing, uh, in my opinion. Uh, no, as far as the things that – yeah, as far as the picks that I, I see that I I really like, of course, I already said I like the just the, uh, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry to the Ravens. Uh, the Hollywood Brown, uh, give Patrick Mahomes another speedster. Uh, this time, one that actually can catch the ball. <laughs> uh, wow! I, you know yeah, he does well with him. those. And and I was a little down on my Niners uh, for not making moves in free agency last part, but you know I kind of looked it over. They replaced that D line a bit. Got rid of Air Armstead. Sad to see him go. He was a staple on that D line. Picked up Malik Collins from the Texans. Uh, good defensive tackle, I think. Great pass rusher from the inside. Uh, Leonard Floyd on the outside, opposite of uh, Bosa. That 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 that's probably going to look pretty good. And uh, I can't think of the dude name for the Panthers for nothing. Uh, we signed him to the defensive man. Uh, so you know, it is what it is, man. We when you have limited cap space like we do, we got some people. I think George Kittle restructured his deal. I want to say Warner restructured his deal. Just trying to find money from somewhere, man, so that we can get a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, that's that's what I've seen, you know, since the last part that I talked about. Um, yeah, so I want to ask you guys, man, who y'all feel like had the best offseason so far? The Chicago Texans, Texans. Eagles, and Texans. I like the Texans. I like Philly, bro. I think Philly. I think Philly made some good moves, bro. Yeah, Philly did awesome make some great moves. Made awesome moves. That's why I say both of them. I think it's a tie. 
Yeah, cause them getting, Devin, get... them getting Devin White, bro, I feel like is, people ain't paying enough attention to that. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. That that is definitely, and that's why I'm about to go with it. Because I'm he I'm, ran like a receiver at linebacker, bro. bro that dude so fast. He's so Ridiculous. bad, bro. If uh they keep, which I'm thinking they're gonna, I'm, I'm not even sure they uh signed Darius Leonard or whatnot. But if you got him and Darius Leonard controlling the middle, you ain't running nothing on them boys, and you're not gonna outrun them, bro. If Darius Leonard can um have if if they sign him back, and then you got uh Saquon, big bat that can uh tote that ball. If he stays healthy, True. you got he they got healthy. Carter too. You still got Jalen Carter in that thing too. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. why I think um I think Fletcher Cox retired. Yeah, he, like, he was retired. gonna it was, it was yeah. about to come anyway. So <clears throat> you gonna have so Jordan, Jordan Day. My question is how did how did they end up hitting that wall last year then? Because they had a talented team on paper last year, and they just hit a wall. Like after we beat them, it was just like they was non-existent oh, after that. Yeah, I just gonna say the offense. It was something to me. It was something. The offense in that coordinator, room, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't say locker room. Yeah, I just think it was the coordinator with these <clears throat> predictable, terrible Marcus plays on Madden. My bad, Marcus. I ain't mean to say that out loud. Oh uh, wow! Well, how many times I beat you? <laughs> Barely enough. Oh, okay, we'll count. Up, we'll count up these championships. <laughs> That's another segment. That's another segment. <laughs> that's, that's subject for another day. <laughs> Tell y'all, man, make sure y'all watch out for that NFC North, man. The Chicago Bears had a really good, a really good free agent, uh, re- really good free agency uh, pickup. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. I, well, uh, Swift, yeah. and then you get Keenan Allen. Then already got DJ Moore mm-hmm. and all of them. Like you uh, said, yeah. then you. Uh, got Jalen Johnson. NFC, the NFC North is gonna be some serious. And uh, I believe it's coming se- football season. You got Detroit, you got the Bears, you got <clears throat> Minnesota, and then of course you got Minnesota. Green Bay. It's gonna Minnesota, be, it's, gonna be it's the only question mark. They ain't got no quarterback. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah, they only, Min- they only I think Minnesota's mark. gonna take a step back. They're gonna be on the question mark. And then plus the fact, and then now, and now, now it's being rumored that Justin Jefferson is trying to push to get to Pittsburgh. So we'll see what happens. So I, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna see what happens, but now nah, that that NFC North, at least for those three, those other three teams, is gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. It's gonna be interesting. Oh yeah, for sure. Only thing, like like I said, man. Only thing that matters is us. Everybody, get your popcorn ready. Tell your team if you're in the NFC, uh, Mr. MVP, Mr. Super Bowl champion, we coming. We are gonna beat everybody. We just getting started, man. And hopefully you, oh, mess it up. you talking about the greatest quarterback that ever played a game of football, Patrick Mahomes? Are you talking about that guy? Are you, are you telling him to be ready for the, the commanders? Oh, or Drake oh, May? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Drake oh, May and the commanders? After you said all that about Tom Brady, he called Patrick Mahomes the greatest of all time. Hey. The greatest quarterback that ever played a game of football. We, are, are we? Are we? Oh, okay. I, I just want to make sure. Just want. I just. I was just asking. I was just asking. That's it. I was Lisa, just asking. Came just your sure. territory. He said. This. I was just trying to make sure. <laughs> and guess what? Lisa, sure. And I'm guess what? The I'm nonsense. We don't acknowledge nonsense. <laughs> okay. All right. Numbers prove it. That's all I'm saying. Tom, that's cool. Numbers prove that's it. Cool. If time so, we going by numbers. numbers? Time we're going by timeline. If we going career up to this point, if we going no, no, career no, no. up to this point, we better. I know. I'm just asking this. If we basing it off numbers, Matt Ryan is better than a lot of people. Yeah, but Matt Ryan didn't win. No, he didn't no, win. Oh, he didn't okay. Win. You want to go there? Eli he Manning then. How about that? Eli Manning oh. won. Philip Rivers. <laughs> I can <laughs> <don't say laughs> listen, If we really going by numbers, we if we by really numbers. going so, by numbers. So what are we basing it on then? The eye test? Oh no, no it ain't just about eye test. Going, you gotta win championships. Going. It's a whole oh, yeah, bunch yeah, of, of course. Pro Bowls, in the right, right, right. Yeah, you got to win. It's a whole bunch of, of other stuff. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. That's, that's why. That's that's why we just laugh at this stuff, man. It, you got you got Pat Mahomes. Yeah, he on fire right now. That's what's on, up. On fire. Okay. All right. That cool. He's he been on fire for a minute, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he been on fire since he became a starter in week 17 of his rookie season. I'm just hey. saying. I'm, come on, man. He been on fire for a while. He right over there. Hey, it is what it is, though. All right, that that Kelsey boy right over there. 
Hey, second hey, best tight end ever play the game. There's mm-hmm. a lot of factors in there. Second best. Second best easily. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You think he All better right. than Grump? I'm gonna probably have to go, yeah, because Gronk stayed hurt a lot. He was injured a lot. Injured a lot, and Gronk still has better stacks. And he was injured, man. But I mean, who's more reliable? Who's more reliable? It doesn't matter. Who's more? Who? 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 I mean, who's more reliable? When, if you, I mean, put, but you got you, to look at those New England teams, though. Who else besides the years that he had Randy Moss? So, he was throwing the ball to and Wells Welker. So, so if you if you had to choose between the two, bro, you, mm-hmm. you pick you pick Kelsey. Over, over, over. Well, uh, probably, I, w- I mean, it's a tough decision. I would probably pick Kelsey. I would probably pick Kelsey. Wow. Only got <laughs> That's not a bad pick, though. That's not a bad well, pick. Tony, no, Tony Gonzalez had one ring, and it wouldn't even be no debate. In my uh, I, I, I had a quarterback. I, I, I look at good. And, that's, and that's why I said if he just had one, that's the only thing. I agree with you on that. I look, I look at Grunt. I look at prime no, bro, like, wrong, like, bro, like like I look at Shaq, bro. Like really? literally, I, 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 yeah. I mean, he's just just dominant you when he was that. on the field. Like he, he wasn't on the field. No, in the red zone, who's better than Gronk in the red zone? I give you that. I would give you that. That's I would give saying. you that. Gronk scored them touchdowns, man. Like Gronk got the yards too. That's what you don't realize. We, With we, less catches. We, yeah, we pick in between the far two. less catches than Kelsey. I'm going, I'm going, Gronk, bro. I'm going Gronk too. It ain't even no also, question if that is Gronk. Also, I'm I'm I like Kelsey I'm though. This is this I'm is you drawing straws. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm saying you yeah. can't go wrong either way. But yeah. in my right now, right now at this particular point in time, if you ask me, I'm gonna probably have to go Kelsey by that much. I think Gronk was a better to me was a better run blocker than uh, Kelsey. I'm, in okay. my opinion. Okay, yeah. I, I get you. I get you. Complete tight end, yeah, definitely. Wait, okay, but well, now nah, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. Man, everything that I can't name nothing that Kelsey can do that Grunt can't do. Better. Only thing I okay, okay, okay. So let me ask you this. So do you think Kelsey? Do you think Gronk is better in between the twenties? Then, then Kelsey is, or do you think Kelsey is better in between the twenties than Gronk? Who? Okay, we are, we we will all take Gronk in the red zone, bigger, stronger, stuff like that. But in between the twenties, who would you take? Gronk. Tape don't lie. Go. I think. Kelsey, I think do, Kelsey, do I get? I think, I think Kelsey's a better route runner, but I'm still going Gronk. Uh, do I put him in their respective yeah. offenses? Because I like that, Kansas that, City's that, offense in yeah. between the twenties way yeah. better than I like New England's I, offense in between that's the twenties. But that's the, that's in the red that. zone. The man is benefiting of some of the greatest coaching ever of Andy Reid, who's on the Mount Rushmore after this Super Bowl. And you had one of the best uh, offensive coordinators. To be honest, and like I said before, Kansas City would have never won his uh, championship this year if the defense won top tier this year. These are the facts. I agree. I give you that. I I give you that. Chris Jones. Chris Chris Jones is too – is almost two safe. I mean, uh, sacks away because Brock Purdy had one second on uh, both of those pass. Those are touchdowns. Touchdowns. Yeah. Even going back to the Buffalo game, huh? I said even going back to the Buffalo game. That's what I'm saying. You can look at every I, game. Look at every game this postseason against Miami. He was man, the defense. I, look at the Bills. I, I, I take the it. defense. Hey, hey, look at the Ravens. It was the defense. I take it a step further, man. If it wasn't for that defense, they probably wouldn't have made the playoffs. If you look at their schedule, okay, they okay. scored like right. 21, 24 points in like eight games that they won. Like they, they weren't a high scoring team. The at all. Coordin- and who said the offensive coordinator it was a big loss for them? And that's why he has career low numbers. All right, let me ask y'all this question then. Since everybody talk about Tom Brady's first couple of rings, is Bill Belichick's defense. Do we get his ring to Andy Reid in that defense? Well, I would. You would probably have to give it to uh, Spagnola. Yeah, well, yeah, Spagnola and yeah. I'm about to say, but Tom was the That's a legitimate guy. question. I mean, okay, okay. Yeah, that is a legitimate question. I would give you that. But we cannot deny what Patrick Mahomes did on those last two drives. I'm not denying that. I'm just can't saying. Can't deny that. You can't but deny that. that. That but won he, the game. That won the game for Kansas City. 
Holden, Holden won the game for Kansas. Oh, Holden won. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. Bear hug you people out there, man. Yeah, my man in the headlock. All right. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Now, what? What? Hold up. You said something about. Uh, you said something about Tom Brady in the first three rings. What you say? I said, about to say we, if we compare, that's like comparing. Uh, if we comparing the first three rings, I'm like, no. This is a totally different NFL. The points are higher. The I defense agree. is – Tom Brady went against far uh, better defense easily. Yeah, the Ravens, the Steelers. The Steelers. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. We can, we can, the Buccaneers. I'm like, I'm like, bro, we talking about all-time great defenses. I'm like, Pat Mahone, this is like he's benefiting from all this. Like all the other quarterbacks. Mm. Just saying, so man. The last... saying, so basically, you saying Patrick Mahomes, I mean, Tom Brady walks No, up Pat Mahomes is that guy. I'm saying. The last. Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes is no. that guy. But we can't deny that if it's different NFL, that's why I said it's like the points going up. It's almost like the. That. It's a, it's, it's, a a, it's a different NBA. I mean, I can't. I mean, how it, that was, they're about to go with. So, the only, so the check only, this out, though. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no, just check this out. I remember we looked it up last time. The, this is the the last two years are the lowest scoring in the yeah. NFL across the board yeah. since 2011. Since they since they made the defensive rules where you can't touch receivers. Yeah. So. They're not scoring as many points as people think. Now, the, the offenses are more wide open. They're spreading the ball mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. You, you don't get a lot of the 12 personnel, too tight end. Like, you, you don't get a lot of that no more. But the defenses are adjusting, man. You see the defenses starting, you know, what what was a line, what was a safety is now a linebacker. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, true. It, 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 these linebackers are fast now. You know, it, it wasn't the case uh, back in the day. And you couldn't. You the couldn't really. Fast. No, no, they not. There's no line. Name a linebacker from back then that's fast as Devin Ray Bush. Lewis. He's like, he's like, he's not fast no, as Devin Bush. No, you this dude is. This, hold on, you said Devin Bush. Devin Bush, bro. We trying to. Okay, is Devin Bush good? You know, here's what I'm saying. No, is Devin they Bush good? Play it. He's a good linebacker. I take him. Devin Bush is up probably on his fourth team five years, and you're gonna try to that's, out of all the linebackers. Great. Wrong? Okay. I'm not comparing you trying to make me compare him to Ray Lewis. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you finna, that's what you trying to do. Hey, hey, and my boy Ted's defense, Devin White ran a four five, four six. That's cool. So, How many Pro Bowl Devin White got? Like two. You got to think about it though, Brinsky. Yeah. Back then, they were having I linebackers were having the play. Like, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'd rather be all pro. I'd rather, I'd rather be one of the best 22 than be in the Pro Bowl. I'm just gonna be honest with you. And he ain't one of those. I'm, hey. hey, you got to think about it, though, Brinsky. Back then, the, the the linebackers were having to play against two tight end with a yep. fullback running yep. downhill. Yep. They were like 250, 260. A linebacker now is 215, 220, 220. 225 yeah. Yeah. running full yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a different game. The, the, the defenses have adjusted. That's why the points went down, because the mm-hmm. defenses are adjusting. You I mean, put some yeah. of them linebackers from back in the day at middle linebacker in these offenses, they they, they won't be able to tackle side like front who? line to sideline. Like who? Ray Lewis, probably. Oh, Cap. Oh, I, I don't know. Nah, I ain't going to say that. I'm <laughs> not going to say – okay. Uh, Big uh, blue uh, cap. So, so, okay, so let me ask you this. So you, think, you think – okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You think a young Ray Lewis right now, a young Ray Lewis could fit and cover in this style of, this style of offense, spread offense right now? I'm just, asking, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking an objective question. All three of y'all. Because that's you think because a Ray Lewis, about, because a two. Let's let's, let's let's put it like this. Let's put it like this. The 2002 Ravens defense, right? 2002 Ravens defense that when the offense right. didn't score a point for like five weeks, they basically carried that team. Right. Do you think right. that that defense, him? Do you think Goose? All them dudes? Do you think they can compare and and match up well with a spread offense right now in the NFL? If Jordan well, Davis can to, be out there, Goose can be out there. To speak, to I think the that, first I think they would str- they would struggle with the outside screens and the That's quick screens that they run now. They would struggle the, to get to those players. 
in the box, so, I, in the box, I don't think it's a problem. If they in the box, it's locked down all day. True. But once you get outside them, once you get outside them, them numbers, you said it, it's, it's gonna be a problem. Ray Lewis. Yeah, all right. So, I'm just saying to speak to the question that you asked, Ray Lewis on the running back. I think yeah, he can hold his own, but. The difference now is the outside but he ain't cover, linebacker. But on, yeah, he's not on. covering a running back. He you know he he, you know he, he have to cover. He have to cover a tight end. He will have to cover well, a tight well, end. Well, that's him literally as, a tweener. Him as middle. Him as middle. Unless you're running five out. Yeah. But the thing right. about it is the difference now is the outside linebacker position. A lot of outside linebackers are hybrid safeties that can guard. Of course, so right. Yeah, of course. That's, mm-hmm. so of that's, course. that's the difference right now. Of course, so yeah. Back then, you went you 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 went put Terrell Sub. On a no, on you were not. Harvey. You wouldn't no, do that. You wouldn't. No. That's, that's Terrell. Terrell says he'd be on the line. McCaffrey. Yeah, <laughs> Terrell says on a Christian McCaffrey right now, man. He would get exposed. That's too, that's I think he, I think he would kind of get exposed a little bit. I'm just gonna but be honest. Terrell says were not known to be no cover linebacker. We try to talk about edge but, players being cover linebackers now, but he was an outside linebacker. In, in, yeah, but, in, but we're trying to say offense, in, how many edge defense, runners you know covering folks in the defense that we playing right now, he would he, he would at some point have to drop back in coverage and cover. How many cover, edge linebackers do you see curl, jump, he, jumping he out the coverage? He would have to cover a hook curl. He would have to cover a hook curl or at least get out to the flats on the cover four. At some at some right. point, or be to. moved to a defensive end. Exactly, he <laughs> would have to. to name one edge rusher that literally has to go cover these guys. It's, that, yes, you would get a couple of plays see, out of them. That's what I'm saying. But, and, but, yes, that's what I'm saying. Nick Bosa may have to jump, may, may have to jump back into a hook curl. You know, five, uh, seven to ten yards mm, to a hook curl mm, or something like that. He may have to drop to the flats at some point in time in a specific defense. I mean, it just. I mean, I just don't know. I mean, and that's just me saying that. Other people may this. Other people may disagree with me. I'm pretty sure a lot of people do. But man, I just think in the box it would be they they they, they would stack well in the box. But once you get outside, man, man yeah. I Ray Lewis in the box, man, is is, is elite. But when you uh when you talk about getting out, when you look at some of the stuff that Fred Warner does, mm-hmm. the middle linebacker, I don't know if Ray Lewis would be able to do that in coverage. I think he'd yeah. be able to tackle just as well. I think he'd be able to attack ball carriers just as well. But when mm-hmm. you're talking about carrying a slot receiver 20, 25 yards up the field, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen him do it. What, That's what, what I'm saying. Record, you know, doing that. In a Tampa no, no, two. Yes, in a Tampa two. Or in a Tampa two. In a Tampa two. The person that would doing that is Derrick Brooks. Derrick Brooks can play that position way better than Fred Warner. In a Tampa two defense, the middle linebacker got straight back in the middle field. It's cover three. It's basically a cover three in a Tampa. And who two. played in that the Tampa two? Got to drop straight back. And who played in the Tampa Tampa two? Well, you're right, Derrick Bruce did. But we it's saying Derrick. if, but we saying if if Ray Lewis was to have to play that, could he do it? But also, yeah, also, well, but, is, but they didn't have, have to play, to play a Tampa two. Got, this, this is what y'all got to get out y'all head. When you say Tampa two, that's a zone. That means he's not responsible for a man. That means all right, you got to right. do is drop back. So when you as soon as the ball snap, no, I'm saying that's exactly. Kind of <laughs> you're not putting you're not putting him in man, so you are, you're not going to expose him unless you put him in man. A tempo two is just a straight drop back, a read step and a straight drop back. I can hide I can hide a middle linebacker who can't cover a that's tight end in tempo two all day. True, but can that but 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 this is the question though with that read step and drop back when that when that ball come across his face does he is he fast enough to get back to the point of attack to make that tackle? All he got to do is get physical. Mm. If he lands, that's, if that's the way. I mean, he got to put his back foot in the ground and go straight or at an angle to get to that tackle. That's I mean, okay. <laughs> right. okay. his I mean, okay. Let's 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 I, I, let's be technical. I, 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 I this this is, is my favorite part of football. Let's be technical. That's all I'm saying. Put him in. But no, you're right. You're right. It's a zone. You're right. It's a zone. It's a zone. You are so correct. But if he dropped back, and let's just say, let's just say they run a drag across the middle. He dropped back. He's seven yards away. He catch the ball seven yards from. Is he fast enough? To get seven yards in a second before he turn up field and go fifteen, that's the that's the question. We talking about technical is, football all I would now. Say is you don't want to go across the middle on Ray Lewis, all right, but he's seven yards apart from him though. That's if true. we in a Tampa two defense, still his closing yeah. speed. Ray Lewis' right. closing speed is a Ray, Ray Lewis that's probably right. played in one of the best yeah. times in in the NFL with uh, Marshall Marshall Falk. Aaron James, yeah, Fred bring, Taylor. I was about to bring up that St. Louis Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, and you telling me he can't keep up with Christian McCaffrey? Stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Let's stop the nonsense. Right? Right? I don't know, man. It just depends. It just depends, though. What would they actually know those people to do? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That, that really you, realize I named all the guys, you realize I named nothing but guys doing the same thing that Chris McCaffrey did, but better. You, uh, okay. An answer this question. Hold on, hold on, Why hold on, did the hold scoring. On, name, name, name them again before you say better. Name them again. <laughs> Uh, you say two time MVP Marshall Falk, 2000 yards, Marshall, two thousand yards, two thousand yards, yards. I give you Marshall Falk. Yeah, I give you Marshall Falk. Andrew and James. Marshall, but go ahead. Ooh, you better look. Um, you better know your football, um, boy. <laughs> Come on, Andrew James. Andrew James was a bigger back. He was a little. He was a bigger back. Andrew yeah. James did it all. <laughs> two thousand yards, all purpose. He was a. He was a bigger back though. Man. He was a big man. Back. Come on, man. But does he become a receiver though? That's the question. When you put Chris, when you split Christian McCaffrey out he's wide, he is a receiver. receiver. You better put a cornerback on him. Don't don't cover I, him with no linebacker. I don't disagree with the names, B Sharp, man. He didn't he check, didn't he didn't he didn't, didn't stand the list. He didn't check the list stats, enough. And then yeah. I take but, but it's different, it's different errors. So yeah. it's different errors though. So so check this out. Why did the scoring in the NFL go up? This is what I'm trying to get you to see. Why spread. do you think it went up? You got spread, spread right? So what happened to defenses? So so how do defenses how do defenses combat that? And you gotta, play, changes. You gotta play zone, man. You know, you gotta play zone. And what do you do with personnel? You gotta you get smaller, smaller and faster. You get smaller, faster. So that's what I'm saying. It's like we saw what happened when the the the, the scoring literally went up when offenses spread out. So that means that the players, the defensive players of that generation were too slow, too big. That's why that's why the scoring went up. As they got lighter and faster, you see now the scoring is back down. What era are you talking about? Oh, early two thousand, <laughs> late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. and y'all call that high score? They were. Oh, let's, did let's, know, let's, I, I didn't even say it was high score. Did you not just see in the uh, early two thousand ten, the mid two thousand ten, the late two thousand? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying when did scoring go up in the NFL though? I'm, By I'm, 2011, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, what are we talking about here? So, you trying to tell me no guys slow? Luke Keekley was slow, Patrick no, Willis Luke was Keekley slow, was not slow. Bobby no, Wagner was slow. slow. Come on, bro. I'm what are we talking about here? Collectively, the defenses were slow, though. Collectively, they were they were slower than the offenses, they weren't able to cover these spread offenses, so they had to get lighter. Man, I tell you this, this. I tell you this. I tell you this, the prototypical linebacker. It's happening in college too. It is. The prototypical <laughs> linebacker back then, when you played linebacker, you had to be six, six, three, six, four, two fifty, and able to take on able to take a punishing, take on a block, get off a block, and, and, and take a tackle. Now you got linebackers that's six foot six, one, two fifteen playing on the inside on a three in a three four defense. And they going sideline to sideline, and they running just as fast as your star receiver. They running four fours right. and four fives. So I mean, Cam Chancellor changed. would be a middle linebacker today. It, yeah. it, it has changed. It has changed. Well, also, I, I definitely agree with that, Ted. Well, I, I, and Cam would Chancellor not would be doing. That man would still be in safety. Who? Cam Chancellor. I mean, I he would be, but you would be smart to put him closer to the ball. I don't want to know what line. Ball out. Out. I'm not saying I he would be awful. He would ball out. I know that is uh, 210 right now in the NFL starting balling. Man, I don't know linebackers' weights off the right <laughs> top of my head. No, no, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> Fred Warner is not like that. <laughs> no, Fred Warner is about what? 225, 235, something like that? Fred Warner. What is Fred Warner? Let's look at see, man. I'm That's a linebacker size. You guys talking yeah, about then, two D. That's, then, that's a big difference. You know that. Two thirty six. But then you were talking. He two thirty six. Two thirty six. Okay. Two thirty six. Now, name that, like I said, just any linebacker you can think of, like that, just light on his ass. Come on, man. What are we talking about here? Yeah, but what man. was Ray? But what was? But what was Ray Lewis's? Playing weight. What was Ray Lewis's playing weight? He I probably mean, he played, just, played around the same thing. He's about like two forty, something like that. He, he wasn't a heavy linebacker for real, for real. And that's what I'm trying to. Come on, man. The game don't. Change. But he was he was never asked to do what these linebackers asked to right. do. He's he, he spot on. He's two forty. Two forty. Two forty. Yeah. He wasn't heavy. Oh man, bro, it's different. Is what what are you taught to do? That's all it is. 
That's, that's no, what, what I'm what I'm saying is, if you drop Ray Lewis in this era right now, he's a he's he, he's elite. He would he would make the changes necessary to compete, right? But what I'm saying is, there are certain players collectively as a whole; those defenses were a lot heavier, a lot slower than they are now. Just out of necessity, because of what they had to do, they had to come downhill. They had to stop. Uh, running backs, eye formation, fight through a fullback. They, you don't ask linebackers to do that no more. And you got to have weight to do that. You, you're an Alabama fan. You know how y'all defenses have changed. Y'all defense is much yeah, lighter. On, on, on the, oh yes, on the you line. Had high, you had a Dante high tower that, that, that was in the middle. Come yeah, on. But man. why do you think that happened? Because offenses, offenses spread out. Dante Hightower can still cover. C.J. Mosley can still cover. Those guys still playing that they saying, well, uh, Dun- when Dante was playing, he was playing elite. Like Vander. I, I'm the, only, only, the only thing that we changed was the defensive line. The defensive line, we just didn't get the big Cody's anymore. We didn't have to. We got the Jonathan Allen. We got the Ron Payne. Those guys are just as big, but guess what? They're a little more lighter. They're quick on their feet. Quinn Williams. Right. Just look. That's what you're looking yeah, for. You're looking for lighter, quick on your feet. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we're we're it's, it's, it's those are linemen. Those are linemen. Those linebackers it's are linebackers. still the same. Oh. Ain't that yeah. ain't changed. No, it's changed. <laughs> for the linebackers? Please. You just we just looked we just looked up two of them. Fred Warner is probably the best middle linebacker right now in the league right now. Mm-hmm. Ray mm-hmm. Lewis in his prime is 240. Right. Jackson and no Duke two totally different things. But that's what so I'm saying. You I, tell him. So I look at I look at like a I look at like a tight end like like Shannon Sharp. Right. Mm-hmm. The reason why Shannon Sharp lit up the NFL is because he's a lot faster than the linebackers and safeties that we're trying to cover. That I don't think that would be the case these days. You're not going to look at a Fred one and say he couldn't k- cover Shannon Sharp. No, he, he can. So he was an anomaly in, in, in that in that moment. That's cute. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. It's a different game, bro. I got to agree with that on that one. Bro, Shannon was good in his prime, but Shannon wasn't lighting it up like you think Shannon was lighting it up in his prime. Like you uh-huh. think he was. Come on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 Okay, I, and I what ten that. and what and what ten eleven touchdowns in a season? That's pretty good for a tight end. He wasn't getting no ten eleven touchdowns. Listen, 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 well, listen. Go ahead. Listen. Now that I'm not giving you, because <laughs> I know it, that. it's a speech. <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, Shannon the all time. See what you were saying earlier, uh, B. Sharp about y'all linebackers getting smaller. Y'all went from D'Amico Ryan's who was two forty seven to uh, Rashad Evans who was two thirty one, two thirty two. <laughs> Say that again. You remember D'Amico Ryan's back when D'Amico Ryan's was middle linebacker. Rashad Evans is the edge. My point. Even even no, that's two different positions, bro. That's what are we talking about? Those are two different positions. Tell me what CJ Mosley weight was. Tell me what Dante Hightower weight was. Tell me what Rolando McLean weight was. All right. So back to Shannon Sharp. His best season. (laughs) (laughs) I'm my bad. My bad. His best season. 81 catches. For thousand yards, nine touchdowns. That's that, that, that's that not was, that's not lighting it up. That's not lighting it up. That's with the Broncos, right? That's with the Broncos. That's yeah. the Bro, that's, that's pretty much an average. What season. year was that? Well, that was no, no, no. 90, during that, that time, during that that time, that's that's awesome for him. Yeah, yeah that's like well, an average uh, year. Uh, no, but that's the point because during that time the defenses were slower. That's why he was able to do that. He wouldn't be able to do that today. Did you say where CJ Mosley was? CJ Mosley is 231. 231. Keep going. Everything 
You said he your middle linebacker, right? All right, so yes, everything that I said, I've been saying the same consistent thing. I said 230, 240 around that range. No, uh, oh boy, was 250. Relando McClain, 255. Mm. Relando no, McClain, I'm, I'm showing you, I'm showing you the drop in weight, bro. Okay, keep showing my bad. Me. I read the wrong, my bad. I read the wrong season, excuse me. It was 87, 87 receptions for 1,010 yards. And he got hurt that season with five touchdowns. That was, I'm, I just, I read the wrong season. My bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Man, we, we all the way in the NFL. Yeah. We, <laughs> hey, we, we better, I love the show. We, I love he could have stayed there, to be honest. Another, we, we, I love it. I love it. It was a great discussion, though. That was a great discussion. Wow. <laughs> yeah, all the thing I was saying, man. Yes. Shit. Matter of fact, I had this discussion uh, since we on tight ends right now. What would y'all rank top five receivers, you and Marcus, right now? I don't think Tiz is on that show. Mm-hmm. What, what's y'all top five right now? Right now? Right now? No, 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 not right now. Like all time? All time. All time. Oh, all time. All time. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really easy. No I'll go Jerry Rice. Jerry. Yeah, no one will be Jerry. No, Jerry tight Rice. end. Oh, tight oh, end. Tight oh, I just said oh, receiver. Oh, I said receiver. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought you said receiver. If I said oh, wide receiver. receiver, my bad. Yeah. Uh, do they got to be in order? Put them. Or we just name them five. No, put them in order. It's only oh, no, we yeah, know yeah. we know you who number jerk, one is. You you a jerk for that, Rob? Rob, my we already know who number one. So go on. Rob, Rob, number one. I'll I'll go. Tony Gonzalez, my number two. Kelsey, my number three. Antonio Gates, my number four. Hold on. Who you said number four? Antonio Gates. Man, let me find that part because I said, uh, who is five? Who is Man, five? I'm trying, because I, I'm trying to think of who my field is going to be because, it, hey, man, it's a lot of – Because I tried to have this argument with somebody like, bro, Antonio yeah. Gates is a way better tight end than Shannon. And Shannon yeah, is a dog. Yeah, he's, he's more, he's more consistent. Good. He is I'll a probably, dog, and yeah, Shannon is a dog. Don't get, I, I don't get this twist. I, know, I want this to be I, I known, know, and I, I want know, this understood. Know, Shannon Sharp know. was a dog. <laughs> yeah, I got Antonio Gates at four. Either man, my five gonna be crazy. Like it's either between Shannon Sharp or Jeremy Shockey, man. Wow! Boy, wow! Boy, stop! Wow! Boy, stop. Wow! Yeah, you reach for that one, bro. Yeah. You reach. Wow! <laughs> that, 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 man, boy, boy, stop! Boy, stop! <laughs> man, Shaggy yeah. Sharp yeah. in five, yeah. boy. Oh. Just go with Shaggy yeah. Sharp, man. Yeah, just go with Shaggy Sharp. Boy, stop! I'll throw Dylan Clark enough. Play with it. <laughs> Danny Clark, I mean, Danny hey. Clark would be, hey, I wouldn't be, hey, you would not. Hey, Brisket, Brisket, you got to clip that, man, because if Shannon Shaw see that, he going to come in. <laughs> Jeremy Shockey. Come on, come on, I just wanted to be you know, stats, man. That's why I wanted to be known because if he see the wrong part of me talking about his ass, here, I don't want him to talk bad about me because I was like, listen here, you, Ocho. that man was Ocho. a dog. That oh, dude, man, 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 he be Ocho. Ocho, that man said you. Jeremy Shockey. Is Jeremy Shockey. Ocho. 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 I'm trying to tell you. Ocho. I am better than Jeremy Shockey, Ocho. Ocho. Oh, man. Get out the Hey, for real, though, clip that one. Hey, clip that one for real. Put that one. Hey, hey. Oh, he gonna respond to that, bro. Hey, man. Listen, hey, man. I'm, I'm, he said, Sharp hey, Tooth. Who is Sharp Tooth the podcast? Sharp Pellet's podcast. That what they need to call him. Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm giving you the attention that you want. Yeah. Man, I ain't gonna let you. Oh, I, man. I, this man straight up disrespected Shannon, man. I don't like that. Dude, man. I like Jeremy Shockey, but like my word. Like, like, you asked me what my personal opinion was. I like Jeremy Shockey, and I feel yeah. like, honestly, if he would have had a better quarter, he, bro, he had Kerry Collins. What was his career? And then he had Eli. Did he win a Super Bowl? Man, we can. Tony Gonzalez had Trent Green. Bro, I mean, There's so many players we could do that for, bro. Yeah, you right. We surely can. He surely can, man. Boy, Sam Shaw had man. John Elway his whole career. You can say Algie Crumpler. I'm just playing. Let's not do that. 
that guy. And let's not act like John Elway wasn't box office before Shannon Sharp got there. Yeah, oh, it's true, though. I mean, ain't no argument. But yeah, it's, it's just that Shannon, Shannon Shaw was doing no something that other ball. tight ends were doing. Yeah, he had I no super like, like he, like he, honestly, I'm just saying, me speaking personally, I like Jeremy Shaw. But that's cool. I, I respect. I, I respect. I, I, respect, Shannon Shaw, I, respect and... I respect Shannon Shaw's number. Yeah, that what happen when y'all get on the pod, man. We go off the rails <laughs> or whatnot, man. For one, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna shout out my boy early. No, 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 I ain't gonna even do it. We'll, I'll wait on that. Since we talking about good old Marsh Madness, this man said mm. Jeremy Shocky, man. <laughs> <laughs> Put some respect on that white boy name, bro. <laughs> That's a five white boy. I ain't gonna hey, lie to you. Jeremy Shocky. Jeremy Shocky. Jeremy Shocky. Jeremy Shocky. Hey, Jeremy Shocky ain't nothing to play with, I'm telling you. But when you Jeremy Shocky wouldn't that, even say that. <laughs> If you said Jeremy Shaw, honorable mention, I'll live with that. I, I can live with that if you said honorable mention. Hey, well, honorable mention then, Jeremy Shaw. There we go. Put, 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 my, boy, put my boy, put my boy. Y'all ain't gonna do that, bro. Y'all ain't gonna shit on my boy, bro. This man still going hard for Jeremy Shaw. Man, yes, look. Sir, put him in there. Hey, Come hey, on, man. You did that, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Put my boy. You didn't do nothing. You did that. Exactly. I'm gonna man, whatever. Like, like, look, bro, I die, I, I die for you. Wow. Okay. All right. That's a little too far. That's a little too far. Okay. It's a little too far. It's a little too far. Okay. On, the, on, the, on, the, on the top five list, Jim, yeah. hit him up like, man, I rolled. Y'all got embarrassed. It was live. <laughs> okay. Back yeah, to the uh, NCAA. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't dying for none of them. That's what I said. I, like, I ain't dying <laughs> for none of them. No, Shout out to everybody. I'm talking about no, I don't know. You ain't got to explain to me, so. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, man. I don't want to hear it. Oh. I don't want to hear it. Who y'all got as y'all early exit for the NCAA tournament? Sleepers and winners. This for men and women. Well, we, <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm not, I, for the women. I'm not even going to do early exit and sleepers because guess what? I don't know none of these teams. <laughs> I probably do. That ain't no I know like four teams. The women. That ain't no disrespect to the women. I probably watch more women's basketball than most women. These are facts. <laughs> I, I, watch, I probably <laughs> watch more women's college <laughs> basketball than I watch men's college basketball. Yeah, it's so, more, it's so much more exciting at some point in time. I wouldn't say it's more yeah. exciting. I would probably get it more exciting, especially when you see Caitlin Clark. If, that, you see right. when, you, when you name a team. Now, if I just pull up Minnesota versus Ohio no, no, State no. women basketball, let's see. If I'm not watching that. that. All right, no then. Idea. So let's stop the I'm not watching that. <laughs> if, I have no idea you don't know. You can tell no. me one player from Duke and North Carolina, but I guarantee you'll watch it if they play. I do know one player from from North Carolina. I can't remember her name right now, but she would. Uh, I ain't talking about. She got the, I'm oh, talking, talking about me, <laughs> but oh, that's what I'm right. saying. Uh, I got but you, you ain't know that. What I'm saying when they say the women game is better, I'm like, no, y'all just watching for the biggest game, which is LSU <laughs> and South Carolina. You get the uh, USC, and you're not just watching Iowa. You're just watching Iowa because Kaitlyn Clark is on. There. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I agree with gotta, you. We gotta stop this. We gotta you ain't stop. Tell a lie yet, Bishaw. You ain't tell a lie yet. Star power, man. That's all it is. You talking about star power? Yes, they have the star power because yes, they need they need all of it, and they deserve it. They earn it. But it is not a better game than the men. Never. But who are your who y'all got winning for the women? We'll just start there. Winning? Oh, Sorry, no. Winning winning oh. the whole thing for the women. Oh, I got I, I can't give you my final four. You want me to pick a winner? That's that's I'm gonna, crazy. I'm going I gotta go South Carolina. I want you to pick the winner. You gotta go South Carolina. Chicken dinner. All right, bro. All right. Who you got? If I'm, pick, if I'm picking the winner. It's on the record, too. All right. All right. Because it's on the record, bro. South Carolina. But if I got to tell you who I'm rocking with, who I'm dying Why did? with. Why did? Listen to this. Listen to this, y'all. I'm telling you who I'm rocking with, who I'm dying with. Let go, Juju. Let go, Juju. Juju. 
Let go. They made a Let Juju go, fan. Let go, Juju. Hey. Hey, I tried to Jimmy do balling, I tried Juju. Let I go, tried Juju. Jimmy balling. But ain't no. Ain't no. And she, she it's just her, man. That's just the only thing. I know what I'm saying. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm Pylan, I'm being South Carolina. If, if she, if, if I I'm put it like this. Fan. Only way, huh? If her K- Caitlin Clark win one, that's why I don't be trying to give Caitlin Clark so a uh, hard time like some of these analysts be giving to. Her. I'm like, bro, nobody can name another player on her on team. Her team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like literally yeah. nobody. No. Any of these other teams, you could probably name three other players that are stars. You can name. Like, bro, you can name LSU star in five yeah. if you if you if bro, you LSU. Yeah, yeah, LSU, yeah, if you want to. LSU got stars from other teams to come to their team. Yeah, that, that point guard, she nasty. Van Lee, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. she nasty. Mm-hmm. You said like Louisville. And then you had one girl to come out of DePaul. She was averaging like 25 and 15. Like, bro, I'm trying come to on. see these. Are they in each other's bracket? Uh, Iowa and LSU is. Yeah, Iowa and LSU. They, Iowa they, and they, LSU they, in they, the same they, bracket. They yeah, could possibly meet in the sweet. Sweet. They could possibly meet in the. I think it's the either the Man, sweet sixteen or the elite. Man, cannot beat the those girls <laughs> by herself. It's gonna literally take her team. If she has an off game, it's over. Because yeah. it doesn't matter if Angel has a bad game, because somebody else gonna pick up the slack. Yeah, I agree with that. Like yeah. John or every or all yeah. these teams, bro. Just think of every women team that you can think of. I can remember the old Connecticut teams when they had Diana Taurasi. They had Swin Cash. They had Sue Bird. I'm like, bro, yeah. you are not beating them. That's why they were yeah. so dumb. Yeah, I mean, that's true. You, you, yeah, you, you got a point. Lie. I'm just like, yeah, you, you got a point. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not arguing. You no know argument from me, man. Yeah, yeah you ain't going to hear it anyway. Bro, you can look up the Iowa team and be like, who is this? Yeah. So, who your winner, Last time is? I seen the team, the star five said, Clayton get... Clark, Clayton Clark, Clayton Clark, Clayton Clark. She the five best players in the world. <laughs> this is Dylan, Dylan. Dylan, Dylan. Listen here. Listen here. Uh, I'm, going with, I'm going South Carolina, man. Yeah, I got to ride with South Carolina. We all going South Carolina. I support yeah. Dunn, Staley Dunn. It's my girl. And fun fact, I'm so fired with the basketball I probably was the only man to have a Don Staley USA jersey. That's how big of a fan I was because I had a Grant Hill one, had a Penny Hardaway one, and I had a Don Staley one. Okay, okay. That boy okay. Had time. That boy no. I, I, I tried. I tried. I tried to find the picture so I could put it on the pie. Be right there in the middle. <laughs> so y'all be so. Hey, be so. You know all the boosters. I wish I knew all the boosts and shoes. This part, this part, we'll all be making some money right now. Go on there and slide over there to the water. Hey, tell, tell them bring me, bring me about two of them things back. So Nick can go ahead and hit the button. Here's a word from my sponsor. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I wish. Boy, oh, I man. wish. Shoot. All right, well, we pretty much all going with South Carolina. Yes, sir. But uh, for the men, mm. is okay. where we can go ahead and take out. Uh, sleepers, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Don't do it. Don't, 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 don't. Psych, roll tight. We oh. always some sleepers. <laughs> sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep. You know what? You know, just I never wake up. <laughs> hey, I, hey, thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> thank you, Ted. Don't wake up. You may see a national championship rope <laughs> hanging up in uh, Alabama. Nope. If that happens, okay. you won't be able to tell me that. I don't see that one happening this year. I just gonna say, did y'all go get an NBA coach of the year and still couldn't win? Uh, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I go get Avery Johnson and still can win. Avery Johnson, man. Avery, Avery Johnson, man. Y'all probably hear him bear talk, not basketball money, and he still can't go get y'all no win. My name is Avery Johnson. I like to play the game of basketball. Basketball. <laughs> hey, that team last year probably had its best chance as any to make a deep run. In the, uh, I would agree. What's the name? I would have to agree. I don't know about this year, bro. So if I had to go with, like, 
I'm talking sleepers. My sleepers and early exits probably go hand to hand. Okay. Uh, oh, I like right McNeil. Oh, go you ahead, and Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I say I like I yeah, like uh, McNeese State. Ooh, I McNeese like McNeese State. State. Okay, they, they always okay. get tournament team. Uh, Colorado has been playing well. Uh, they got a game coming on in a second. I think they in like the one of the little first four matchups. And we talk about early exits. I think Colorado play Florida. Okay, top to ten. Talk to me, Ted. Yeah. Colorado play Florida. Yeah, yeah, Florida could lose that game. Yeah, uh, talk to me, Ted. They've been blowing Florida could lose that game. all year for me. And mm. who else? Uh, who's Gun- Gonzaga got? They got an interesting matchup. I can't remember the team. I have to look it up. I'm looking at it. Hold on. I'm looking, I'm looking it up right now. Hold on. I got you. I got you. And Gonzaga is um, a perennial powerhouse, but. Uh, they got to play Magnese. Yeah, they got to play Magnese, so. Yeah, they could get some first round action, man. You know what? Magnese is one of them teams. What is that one that you would say is just a first, just upset alert, just straight up upset alert? <clears throat> UConn. Florida. 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 I was just UConn? about to say UConn, man. UConn? I was just about to On say UConn. UConn. Yeah. UConn. UConn been blowing games all season, bro. I was just about to say UConn. But the yeah. first game, then they're gonna lose to a they playing Stetson. They playing Stetson. I I, I don't. This, this is this is why I see UConn losing, and this is not just because I'm an Auburn fan. I think UConn loses in the Sweet 16 to Auburn. I think I think Auburn matches up very well to a lot of teams in this bracket yes. for the simple reason. This Great. this is the reason why. This is the reason why Auburn is big. Yes, Auburn has depth. And Auburn, shoot the ball. and Auburn can shoot the ball. True, very true. And they play and they play really good defense. So when it get mm-hmm. when you get in the when you get in the bracket is all about matchups, and Auburn matches up very well against a lot of these teams. That's yeah. why my my floor for Auburn is the Final Four. I think Auburn can make it to the Final Four. I, I got Auburn going to the Final Four this year. Um, and I think Auburn. I think Auburn. I think. I think. <clears throat> excuse me. I think UConn gets to the Sweet Sixteen, and I think Auburn beats them in the Sweet Sixteen. Yep. That's 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 why I'm going yeah. with that. That's what I'm going with that. Basically, nah, everything I, he just said, I agree with. Yeah, man. Auburn, think, Auburn is a matchup nightmare this year. I, I think, mean, last I think year. Auburn, I think Auburn and Purdue are on a collision course. I yeah. For what? The Final Four? Yep. Yeah, because Purdue is uh, Purdue is number one they, overall seed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But they, they oh, so, so you, Okay, they wait, wait, so you said, wait, wait, so you said. They have a history so, of underperforming in the tournament. That, that's that's true. That's true too. So, are you calling Purdue and Auburn in the national championship game? I know it. All. Yeah, I think they're on the collision okay. court, bro. I think Purdue. I think Purdue pull it together. I think Purdue run the table in they in the region, and I think Auburn gonna come out because the thing about it is Auburn is a, is a top five team. They just in games this year they don't play like it. It's been a lot of games like it, in that Alabama game where Alabama snuck that little win. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? We we yeah, came up short. Yeah, it's like Auburn will get up on teams Alabama and then next thing you know. No, don't do that. Go ahead. <laughs> you heard what I said. Y'all snuck y'all a little win. You sent your little text message. It's like it's like Auburn will get up on teams and then they'll just they'll just put on the cruise control and then next thing you know, the game is close. Yep. And then now they got to I mean, scramble uh, to get back in. To be honest with you, I think the SEC overall is just to this year I saw that any given night anybody can lose. Yeah, you know, you can take any team in the SEC, they got an ugly loss uh, somewhere down the board. Uh, they lost to a team, another SEC team they, they weren't supposed to lose. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, so I, I got Auburn winning it all. Brisket's gonna be man, part that brisket house at when Auburn win. The national championship when they win their first round game and then get put out, or they get upset. You need to send me that boy talking about you need to send you some paraphernalia. (laughs) And and to be completely honest with you, this is it is a potential that UAB and Auburn can play in the second round. If UAB beat San Diego State, if UAB beat San Diego, uh, San Diego State, it could be a UAB Auburn. Second round. That, that's the Magnese State game that I watched too. The UAB Magnese State game. Magnese mm-hmm. State get beat them by like twenty points. I want to say. 
I think it's like 60 to 80 something. Ooh. Ooh. I'm telling man. you, this is a tournament team, man. It's a team that gets in the tournament and, and they upset some of your favorite teams every year. I'm telling you, man, this is gonna this 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 is gonna be interesting. Uh, who you got winning, T? Auburn. <laughs> well, typical. Marcus. Wait. Auburn. Typical. <laughs> Nicholas. Man, I got Auburn going to the Final Four. Man, I don't know, man. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I ain't even got that far. But now you put me on the spot. Man. Yeah. I, I kind of I I have to agree with Marcus. I think Auburn's in that championship game. And I think Auburn is playing. Man, that's tough, man. That's tough. Man, that's crazy, man. Because I think Texas A and M can actually go far too. I agree. They they've been playing. That's true. Good basketball. I think Texas A and M can go far, but I think when they get to that elite, that Sweet Sixteen, if it plays out the way it's supposed to, they'll probably end up playing a Duke in the Sweet Sixteen. Man, Duke and who we, Duke and who who we used to know Duke as being though. Duke. I agree, that's, that's and I think account. and I think Texas A and M could beat a Duke team. If you know, mm. you know, one 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 game on the line, man. I think it might be an all SEC all SEC national championship game. I'm gonna go Auburn, and I'm gonna ride with Texas A&M, man. And I'm gonna go Auburn. I got Auburn winning it all. I got Auburn winning it all, man. Auburn is a matchup nightmare for a lot of teams, and I, I'm telling you, yeah. people don't know that, man. Auburn is a matchup nightmare for a lot of teams this year, man. Auburn got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Around you. They got depth, and they got, and they can shoot the ball, and they play defense really, really well. I'm just, man, yeah. man. can't wait. I can't wait to see these bums get put out. This guy, man, <laughs> these bums, this guy, these peasants. Oh man, get out of all here! All your life, all your life, man. You gonna hate like that? He's some bums. It's in his sweat. <laughs> it just come out and pause every time. No, nah, <laughs> sir. We all like fats <laughs> over here. I just realized we got three Auburn guys up here, and all of them said the most asinine statement ever. It's the asinine. No, we talking about basketball here, and we've been this knocking on the door for a couple of leagues. Nine, after ten, after eleven, after twelve. I'll put, I'll put to you like this: this is this is the first time in a very long time that I've had Auburn win in my bracket. Yeah, a lot. So, I, yeah, it, they legitimately have a chance. To win the whole thing this year, everybody. All I know is Virginia double game. dribble. I just know Virginia, Virginia double, double dribble. dribble. That's all I know, man. That's it. That's it. Yeah, who you got, Brinsky? Yeah, you ain't say who you got. Make make it a clean sweep. Yeah, go ahead and say Auburn, man. For one, one time, we won't tell it. We won't tell the people in Tuscaloosa. We won't tell. Oh, for real? Y'all won't tell them. But if you say say Auburn, I'll tell everybody. They ain't got to tell. Don't worry. I'll tell everybody. Start, bro. Go ahead. Say it. You can't talk on speed dial. I I possibly got uh, UConn winning. Possibly got Houston winning it all. Houston, Houston blow big games. I'm just tell you that now. They do. That's, Houston do big games. That's, that's, big that's game. cool. This 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 NCAA tournament, man. It, they they good all, on paper though, for real. All, they, all, all, they really all that go out the all that go out the window when it's the tournament. Anybody can. We gonna see what y'all do, but only thing I do know. Roll tide. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's the only thing I, I ain't saying they're gonna win it all, but I just said roll tide. Right. Y'all know y'all know what time it is. I respect How far it. you think they gonna get? How far you think they make it? You think they're a sweet sixteen thing? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, make, I agree with that. Sweet sixteen. Yeah, I, I agree with that. that. I think I Alabama sweet sixteen team. team. I, I hey, man, how far you think they gonna go? I mean, who you think uh gonna win it all? Uh, in the tourney, yeah, the Cougs, baby. Yeah, I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. yeah, I knew it was coming. Hey, man, they got it. They got to do. But you know, one thing about Houston, man, just being realistic, it, it's been a lot of times, bro, that we didn't got far. <laughs> uh, we, we look like the team. 
You know what I'm saying? They gnaw the way back to when Elijah Warren and Drexler was playing. Bruh, and they just, they don't get over that national championship up, bruh. I don't get what it is. It's a little big game. Yeah, they lose the big, they lose, they lose some of the, the big ones, man. And, uh, but I'm, I'm definitely going up to Houston. They're looking good. They're looking great. They're doing what they got to do, man. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about this team. It's just history shows one thing with H-Town and we could be top five and fall off the uh, fall off the scale a little too early. So, you know, hopefully we'll see what they do and um, get it popping from there, bro, for real. I ain't going to lie, man. Alabama might be an elite 18. Mm-hmm. I mean, because mm-hmm. they messed up with hey, Charleston. Run, run, run down they, they, messed up, real quick, Nick. they messed up with Charleston. So right now. Right now, you got North Carolina, North Carolina, Wagner, Mississippi State, Michigan State, St. Mary's, Grand Canyon, Alabama, Charleston, Clemson, New Mexico, Baylor, Colgate, Dayton, Nevada, Arizona, and Long Beach State. And so Alabama's playing Charleston. So if they win that game, they will play the winner of the St. Mary's Grand Canyon game. Don't sleep on Grand Canyon. Yeah, don't sleep on Grand Canyon. They probably will knock off St. Mary's. Not think, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, if okay, let's say let's say that happens. Does Alabama beat Grand Canyon? It might. It's gonna be a game. I promise you that. Yeah, I don't know. All right. So let's just say let's say Alabama does beat Grand Canyon. All right. The top of that the top of that bracket is North Carolina versus Wagner. I think we all say North Carolina win that game. But the game, this is a game right here: Mississippi State and Michigan State. That's gonna hmm. be a game. They're gonna be a game. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think Mississippi State could win that game. I, I got Mississippi State in that probably. And so if you State, got Mississippi, you got that Mississippi State. They blew some games. They supposed to win this shit though. You got that Nevada team in this bracket too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nevada playing. They, yeah, they playing Dayton. Yeah, they playing they Dayton. Yeah, they, that, they, that they, bracket that. That's not as easy a uh, draw as it looks. Yeah, like. as, as people think. Because mm-hmm. I'm gonna say they they never been playing to their potential this year. Yeah. Man, that's tough. But they, but they ain't no slouches either. I mean, okay, all right. So let, all right, that's the West bracket. So let's look at the, the East bracket. Okay, we, out of those two brackets, which one you think is the hardest? The East or the West? Mm, okay, so let's run down the East real quick. The East, you got UConn, Stetson, Florida Atlantic, Northwestern. San Diego State, UAB, Auburn, Yale, BYU, uh, do I don't know how you say that school? Do 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 D U Q U E S. Oh yeah, that, that was LeBron coach at. <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> Illinois, Moorhead State, Washington State, Drake, Iowa State, South Dakota State. Okay. That's actually that's actually a kind of shaky division, bro. Like the only real threats yeah. I see, the only real threats I see is San Diego State. Yale, Yale mm-hmm. can be a threat. UConn can be a threat. Well, how Yale gonna be a threat when Yale gotta play Auburn? I think Auburn beat Yale. I think I Auburn, Auburn beat Yale, Yale too, but Yale ain't no slouches though. Man, Auburn sucks. How about that? How about those <laughs> apples? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we keep talking about Auburn is and Auburn that uh, Auburn about to use to the Ivy League. We were just showing Alabama love. I literally just sat here and said Alabama could probably be an elite 18. Final four. Oh, I, and I said nah. I don't know about all that. I don't know about <laughs> that. Uh, man, we got man, we got the guys coming in next year, but it's all good. Say, it, ain't it Wednesday it's too 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 early in the week to be drinking, be sharp. And that's you, man. That's you, you possibly bro. you po- you possibly got a North Carolina Alabama Sweet Sixteen game. In that game, who you taking? North Carolina. I would probably take North Carolina in that game too. And I'm a bit yeah. on for the cast on the parlay board. Man, Mississippi State could just destroy the top of that bracket. It, man. it could. They could. They could. I, Mississippi I State North Carolina matchup. I'm not so sure Tar Heels will win that. Man, that's tough, man. So let's just let's 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 look in an alternate universe. What if Mississippi State does win that game? Now you got a Mississippi State Alabama rematch, SEC Sweet 16. I got Alabama. Be Mississippi State. State. Yeah, I got Alabama to get beat Mississippi State. Cause I I bet on Mississippi State earlier this year and them boys came up 
came up real short. <laughs> <clears throat> and they were like, well, five, and they were like a five point favorite. Well, don't bet on Alabama. Don't bet against them. Oh, bro, I'm not gonna bet on y'all at all. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna show Alabama a little love, man. I think Alabama. I think Alabama. I. I I mean, Mississippi State is the is the biggest outlier in that top part. So they like like Ted said, yeah. they can really they can really bust that bracket open because they could yeah. be the North, they could be North Carolina, man. Yeah, and make it look bad too. Exactly, exactly. Hey, hmm. Haven, how far you stay from spring, bro? Uh, spring. Uh, spring test. Uh, I'm I'm in Atlanta. Oh, okay. But uh, I used to live in Spring, man, at one point in time. Me too. That's why I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, spring was dope, bro. Spring dope, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. I got that. The only thing I do know is roll tight. But we're gonna move on. Negative. I do want to give a special shout out to the greatest director ever, Mr. Spike Lee. Happy birthday, my brother. Birthday, my dog. Happy birthday. Mr. Mars. Sure. So just as a little happy birthday celebration, everybody just give me your favorite Spike Lee movie. And I'm going to tell you mine. And I wish I had it up right now. The greatest movie and one of the most important movies of one of the most historic people in the history of life, Mr. Malcolm X. I love yeah. Malcolm X so much. He's been my screensaver forever. Y'all don't, y'all see that? Shout out to the GOAT. Shout out to the GOAT. He always going to be my screensaver. I wouldn't even put my wife and child up there. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I just, uh, can they say so? You ain't gonna put me out there. Like, man, I, we got. Game ahead. But man, yeah. Jeremy Shockey, now this. Hey, as I'm gonna say, Ted, my Jeremy Shockey take a little bad. No, 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 man. Oh man! Oh man! Hey, oh, man. Oh, man. My best over here, family. Hey, man, my Jeremy Shockey take a little horrible. No, oh, man, my family is the most important thing to me, man. I know. I, we know. We know. We know. Hey, man, stop trying to start the star stuff, it. bro. I just like hey, Aubrey, Ted dude. started. I just agree. Yeah, I know. No, oh, man. Ain't no more some thugs. Just messing with you, bro. No, oh, man, you ain't messing with nobody. Y'all some thugs. You know that, <laughs> but, yeah, Malcolm X is easily my favorite movie. Denzel Washington got snubbed on that Academy Award. That was his award, and they gave it to one of my other favorite actors, Al Pacino, for one of probably his least favorite, not not least favorite, least recognizable role. He didn't win it for Scarface. He didn't win it for uh, Godfather. He didn't win it for Heat. He didn't win it for a bunch of all-time great movies that he played in. It's a movie that nobody probably ain't never heard of. And it's a love story about nothing. So, shout out to Al Pacino, though. Kind of like, kind of like how Leo, kind of like how Leo won for uh, the Revenant. They were just giving it to him. Oh no, no. He deserved I, that, but I felt like they could have gave it to him uh, years ago. Not for the <laughs> Revenant. The Revenant. Yeah, when I good. say uh, my favorite Spike Lee movie um, of all time, which is hard because he's he's literally like. Like top two favorite directors of all time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I will say, uh, School Days is my all time favorite from Spike. Okay. Uh, close to that is Do the Right Thing. Um, okay. I love Do the Right Thing, it's a very good movie. Uh, those said, are my top wanted, two Spike. You go off. <laughs> How did I not know you was gonna be the one? Go ahead, man. Just go ahead. Reel, reel them off, then. Reel them off. No, nah, no. Nah, I just did two. I just stopped there. No, nah, no. Nah, go ahead. Give me another. You might wait. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't want to turn no, it no, to No, no. Give, give, give me three. Give me three. Give me three. Give me three. Uh, He Got Game would be my third. 
Oh, oh you motherfucker. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> good one, yeah. good one. You got, I, that's what I only wanted to do too. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna name, name a sleeper that most of I know most folks ain't what, and I watched this as a kid. Go ahead. But school days, uh, that's what made me really want to go to HBCU, bro. If, if it wasn't for school days, I probably would have never went to Tuskegee. Uh, growing up, that was that was a movie that highly influenced me on like HBCU culture and wanting to go to a black a black college and shit like that, man. So that's why uh, I big up that movie so much, man. That's one of my favorites of all time, bro. Minus all the singing in the middle, like you know what I'm saying, but. <laughs> Yeah, the good and bad hair and all that crap. Oh, the good and bad hair. Uh, it was uh, too long, bro. That sequence was too long. Man, it's on fire if you watch it, man. But it's, but it's still irrelevant. DC <laughs> deep in the and YouTube. It's still irrelevant. That's what makes it so fun. Yeah, deep deep in the YouTube uh, archives, uh, I have a Spike Lee tribute that I made a long time ago in high school. I really want to be. The next Spike Lee man on the directing side, man. Like I really want to to be like him, but um, that's just a little bit I got to say about him and how he influenced me. So happy birthday, Spike! You know what I'm saying? Real talk, my one of my favorite directors of all time. And, and speaking of that movie, one of the scenes when they were doing the uh, doing the uh, not the probate, the uh, step show, when they had the alphas up there, the real alphas in there, yeah. Did you know that they just did a recreation of? Oh, shout out, shout out to your friend, man. Thank shout you, man. The oldest and the coldest, the first forever frozen. You hear? Uh, those same guys, they just did, they just did those same guys that was in that scene, just did the exact same thing. I can't remember what it was, and I thought that was so far. Ice, mm. ice, baby. Mm-hmm. Go to the <laughs> it was. That was oh, yeah, that old fire right there. Yeah, I but, think they were the only the only real frat that actually was in the movie that, that made a cameo. Am I right? Possibly, yeah. I no, no, so. no, no, no. I think so. No, no, the K's and all, no, everybody else was in there. They were just in the background. Yeah. Everybody yeah, was in there. Yeah. I mean, background, but I'm saying as far as like, like, had, like actually have a scene. No, yeah, have that was a scene. Know. Yeah, I think the speaking was, role. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a speaking role or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Well, what are y'all favorites? Oh, man. So everybody said all oh, my favorites, man. Yeah, I definitely say uh, The Malcolm X, I like that. You got to. That's in the category of his own. Uh, I would say school days and he got game, probably my top two. Uh, Crooklyn, Mo Better Blues. I don't want to just name them, but I will say this. I will say this. For me, for me. Here we go. You're going to steal One it. of the things that I, I loved about Spike Lee was the Gotta Be the Shoes commercial. <laughs> you talk about him. <laughs> You talk about impact and what that did for not only his brand but the NBA. Oh, that was it was amazing, man. Like that commercial had grown men thinking they, they could buy those shoes and jump as high as Mike. Yeah, like nice. literally. Sometimes <laughs> and, uh, man, so, yeah. Just speaking on Spike Lee, I would have to go Malcolm X. Uh, I like Jungle Fever. Uh but Jungle Fever. But what really hit home with me, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if y'all watched this in school, but I got to see it in school. Being from Alabama, it was the four little girls, that documentary mm-hmm. right there. But that, mm-hmm. that, that documentary, that documentary was very, very informative and it, it messed me up inside. So impact, he really opened my eyes to how things used to really be back then in Alabama growing up in, you know, Tuskegee seeing how they were treating kids in Birmingham at that time. So, like, like, shout out to my boy Spike Lee for giving that insight, man. Yeah, man. I might, man, y'all done said all of them. But, um, <laughs> I, mean, literally, I mean, I would just be basically saying the same thing. So, I'll be talking. He got game. Uh, but two that y'all didn't rank. The Black Klansman. <laughs> I really enjoyed that movie. And then there's another one I don't think a lot of people actually saw. It's the Huey P. Uh, 
Huey P. Newton story. Oh, uh, what is it, man? Uh, man, I enjoyed that one. So basically, it was just Roger Smith just sitting in a chair, and he just basically, the whole movie is just him giving a monologue. I mean, that was great. I enjoyed watching it. Talking about free you wait. Talking about free, I know, that was a great, it was a great movie, man. I enjoyed that. So yeah, shout out to Spike Lee. Only movie I wish he never made was that Shy Rat movie. That's the only man, movie I wish he bro. Made. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I had to man, bro. And I wait, hey, I was waiting on one of y'all to be like, yeah, that's my favorite movie. I was like, yeah, they can't. But Cal, <laughs> Cal, <laughs> and that movie was not it, bro. I, 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 <laughs> I don't even know what I was like, watching. Yeah. I don't even know what he was doing with that one, man. I, I I still was so confused. I'm still confused. I don't even know what it was about, bro. I really don't even know what this movie was about. So, but <laughs> at, I ain't going to end it like that. I ain't going to talk bad about my boy like that. I just <laughs> didn't like that one. I just didn't like that yeah, one. Please, please don't. <laughs> What about but, honorable mentions, guys? Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because you ain't about to, you ain't about to say it. Because I feel like I thought <laughs> Ted was gonna be the one to say it. If you never seen Clockers, uh, Clockers is yeah. one of the this finest movies. Yeah. Very, very slept on movie that most I know most folks haven't seen. A Spike Lee, I know yeah. for a fact, have never seen that movie. All star cast in there. Makai Pfeiffer, uh, was it? Yeah, it was Makai uh, Pfeiffer playing the leading role in that. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very fine movie. Yeah, uh, well, and you. definitely uh, Inside Man. I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, Inside yeah. Man. And yeah. most folks don't even know that's his movie. That's our fighting. I'm going to tell you mine. Uh, I like She Hate Me. That was a good mm -hmm. movie with uh with my boy from Eight Mile, uh, Anthony Mackie. Anthony mm -hmm. Mackie was in that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, that, was, that movie. Girl, was Girl Six was a good movie to me growing up. I think just because I got to see uh old girl knockers man in the movie. I was a kid. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh, she's, uh, she's gotta man. have it. Definitely was a uh, was another one that I, I grew up watching, even though it was black and white. Mm -hmm. I liked uh, damn, what, what's the name of this one, man? Oh, uh, more better, more better blues, out. More better blues, man. Man, listen, hey, I I would have been so mad we got off this pod and I didn't say more better blues. Thank you for saying that. Bro. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 one more, and this is one that probably a lot of us have not really seen, but uh, it's one I want y'all to go check out called Bamboozle. Definitely seen that mm -hmm. with Damon yeah, Wayne. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So those are those are my favorites. I did not know he uh he was behind Kings of Comedy. Also, I didn't know that. Yes, didn't sir. Mm -hmm. Big I, part I, of yeah. So. Man, there's so many, man. Spike is a is a one of Legend. the greatest, man. Greatest. Uh I just I want him to come out with one more mega hit, man. Like one more. It seems like these past few years. Guess what? It's coming. Well, then him I, and Denzel Washington and Jeffrey Wright. Well, I can't mm. wait. I can't I wait. Just, he, uh, I just seen it today. That's why I like, okay. We got the heavy hitters yeah. coming. He uh he had a hand in uh Tales from the Hood too, right? I didn't know. And he like, yeah, I think he like produced or something. I don't think he directed it. Yeah, he that. was involved in that. Yeah, who did Vampire Brooklyn? I don't know. It was probably like Eddie Murphy. Yeah, it, probably, it had to be because you know he he was doing his own directing in those movies also. Eddie, man. No, nah, Wes Craven. Wes Craven was actually the director for that one. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's High and Low. That's about to come out. That's that's the name of the movie. I am yeah, he does a yeah, he does a, a great uh, job. Go ahead. That's a, uh, the uh, movie that uh, 
Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, and uh, Jeffrey Wright about to all be in that I've seen that those called high and low. More than likely, it'll probably come out uh, the end of this year or next year, but it's coming out on uh, Apple TV Plus. <clears throat> but That's dope. when I said, yeah, it said. Yeah, it said announcing uh 2024. Yep. February 2024. And begin filming. They filming right now. They just started filming. So sometime this year. Hey y'all, B Sharp, I gotta hop off, man. I'm gonna holler at y'all, boy, man. Yeah, go ahead, man. We uh man, you can't hang on for a little bit, man. I gotta get my kid ready for school in the morning. <laughs> Just, go ahead, man. Go ahead. And to have that we, conversation with the old lady. Uh, but all right, time, man. Y'all be safe, man. Yes, sir. Glad to get you on here for a minute. You know it. You know it. I'll be happy to come back. Yeah, F off. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. You dedicated to it. I tell you that, man. <laughs> as long as you know it. <laughs> Yeah, Spike yeah. Lee does a great job, bro. Of just putting social commentary in movies and not making it boring. Because yeah. a lot of people try that and it just be like, man, this is the boringest film I've ever watched. But he does man, a good you know job. It's just like he does an you awesome don't even job at that. And I ain't even think about that. And that's what I really love about his uh, movie. But that's just uh, my thing anyway when it comes to that. But. Man, the goat, man, in my eyes. I'm going to have an interview with this man one day. And it's going to be on my bucket list. And guess what? I will be fanned out. Like, <laughs> yes, sir, I am fanned out. I'm going to ask you all types of questions to confirm stuff that I wanted to ask for a long time. But this was a conversation that <laughs> we had um, offline last pod. Jake Paul versus Iron Mike. Golly. Now, a certain somebody, shout out, shout out my uh big cuz, Jason, and Tez, they both was on one side. And me, who I think, yeah, it was me and Arlon on the other side. And we we had Mike Tyson. They had Jake Paul for some odd reason. Like, bro, I don't care how old Mike Tyson is. I don't care what y'all think. Mike Tyson is in way, way better shape than he was in that Roy Jones fight. Jake Paul does not stand a chance against Mike Tyson. And ladies and gentlemen, as you all should know, we all have a bet on it. And Whoa, they will, yeah. We 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 made a little wage on it. Made a little wage on it. What, what was the best? Small who, coin. Who win? And uh, we know who gonna win. I know who 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 should win. No, no. Who you got winning? I don't care about no should. Who you got winning? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Baby. No, I want to get all that. Then you can explain that. I'm going to get that. <laughs> Come on, man. This is what I'm saying, right? <laughs> we know in a real fight, see, man. This is how you ain't nothing, Captain. Hey, man, your so, yo, uh, listen, listen, God, God, no, 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 yo, yo, you know, you know, your uh, laptop was messing up. We, we, we right. trying to hear you, but your laptop was messing up. Okay, okay, it's, okay, okay, hear me out. There you go. Are you good now? Saying. You good now? This is what I'm saying, man. Look, Mike, I'm putting my money on Mike any day, but in this era of boxing, right. With this Jake Paul fiasco, pay pay him to lose crap that they got going on over there in the park camp. Hey man, I'm gonna be highly disappointed if Mike just take the bag, man, and let this kid knock him to the ground. You know what I'm saying? Do I? I, I feel like if it's a legitimate fight, Mike is gonna win the fight. But I don't think it's a legitimate fight. I think this is a fight that they're going to pay. 
uh, Mike Tyson to lose so Jake Paul can keep his uh, undefeated pretty boy record going. I think it's all a sham. I think Mike is going to take a bag. Mike Mike don't have an undefeated record like uh, Floyd. So it is nothing for Mike to take another L under his belt. Um, I think this is a cash grab. Uh, I don't think it's, it's – <laughs> I don't want to see Mike step in his ring with this kid. I know he I know what he needs to do and what he's gonna what he could do and what he should do is knock him out. But I think Mike's gonna take a bag, man, to lose to this white boy, man. And, and I, I'm just being real with you. I think it's just the business right now. Uh I think betting on Mike Tyson to win this fight, you're 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 risking a lot of money on this if you if you if you put money on Mike. On this one, I think Mike. I I know Mike can do it. I know Mike should do it, but the business is what I'm looking at, and I don't think that they finna let uh, Jake Paul's first loss come to Mike Tyson. I feel like it should, but I don't. I don't. I don't see it happening, bro. I think Mike's gonna get his bag. They probably gonna pay Mike like two million dollars to just you know to fake like he about to get knocked out or something like that, man. And yeah. Or they might just they might just go hands to hands all the way to the end, man. I don't know. Maybe they're gonna show Mike some respect. I, well, I think it's gonna I think it's a cash grab, bro. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly. It's a pay-per-view okay. cash grab. Okay. Moving on from you. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what you I think? mean, what did y'all say last week? We said pretty much they said. <laughs> I'm gonna let Ted say what I said. said. I don't want to miss uh, it, brother. You you want me to go now? Go ahead. Yeah, man. Yeah. They got a light. So, uh, <laughs> so I tell you this. First of all, I want to say this. Before I get started, I want to say that I did not, I do not, and did not want to put money on this fight. I feel like that this fight is one of those fights. That halfway through it, no matter who you put your money on, you're gonna be feeling like, man, I shouldn't have bet on this. <laughs> it is there's a couple reasons why I picked Jake Paul to win. One, he's starting off as the Vegas favorite. There's a reason for that. Two, Mike Tyson is 60 years old. Oh well, I'm not gonna say he's 60, he's what 58, 59, something oh, wow. like that. 56, oh, close to 60. It He's old. Father, father time is undefeated. Right? But look at look at our boy George Jake Paul. Yeah, Jake Paul. Okay, Jake Paul. I mean, Mike Tyson is going to be in better shape probably than um, uh, I can't you see what that is. Wait, he's 57? 57. I was close. 57. Was in the middle. Jake. Mike Tyson is going to be in better shape than he was for the Roy Jones fight. But I highly doubt that he's going to be in better shape than Jake Paul. Hmm. Okay. Even here's another thing that a lot, I think a lot of people aren't, aren't, aren't considering. Even in his prime, when he was in press conferences saying he was going to eat babies, you know, and all of this, and he was the most feared man in Boston, even in his prime, he was a, two, three round fighter. Anytime he got into deep water, he got in trouble. So in order for at 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 57 years old, that doesn't get better. Like you know, he's not gonna be able to his endurance isn't gonna be better than it was when he was 19, 20 years old. You're banking on Mike Tyson ending this fight in the first two or three rounds. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't happen and it goes to a decision, Vegas already told you who they got winning. Mm. It's going to be very tough for Mike Tyson to win a decision in this fight. A lot of people aren't considering that. Mm. You see, so you're basically banking on a knockout in like the first three, three rounds, right? And the last reason, Jake Paul has recent fighting and recent training. Mike Tyson is getting up off the couch, <laughs> And getting prepared for this fight in what four months? Off the podcast. I love Mike Tyson. I just don't think he should have took this fight, man. 
it's it, like David said, it's clearly a cash grab. If they were fighting for like moving up in rankings or belt or just like it was sanctioned or something like that, it'd be different. But this is entertainment. Okay. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to bet on it. This is entertainment. And then the Mike Tyson that everybody fears is not going to be the guy that shows up. That was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So that's my argument behind it, man. And there's a couple more reasons, but I don't want to be long winded. But I think that those reasons are things that people need to think about. I mean, hmm. I, I've seen Mike lose, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? In his prime. This is a cash. And it's round. usually in the later rounds. <laughs> I love Mike. I want Mike to go in that <laughs> ring and knock this kid out and give him his first L and bring him back down to reality. I would love that. That's a storybook yeah. situation. But do I see Mike handing him his first L? I wouldn't put my money on that, man. V Vegas is basically telling you is enticing people to bet with Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. And they're rarely wrong. <laughs> Man. I'm, I'm trying to say what, what you got to say about this, nigga. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, I ain't really been following <laughs> it for real, for real. But after listening to Haven and, and Tez, I'm more inclined to rock with them. <laughs> I'm go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Um, I am more inclined to ride with them because they make very great points. For one age, father time catches up with you, and you made a very good point as well about from the fights that I have seen Mike Tyson fight. A lot of his fights didn't go past the fourth round. That is very true. So I am going to reluctantly say that Jake Paul. It hurts. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say this. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to have to rock with y'all on that one, man. This, it does feel, this does feel like a cash grab. This does feel like a money grab. This does feel like, feels like something that's being uh, promoted in that Paul camp with Logan and Jake Paul. I mean, the same thing with this dude holding the, uni the United States Championship, which I don't understand in WWE with Logan Paul. I don't get that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to rock with, uh, I'm going to rock with, uh, with uh with jake paul in this one. reluctantly reluctantly they're both gonna make a ton of money off of this now. exactly exactly yeah, gonna make a, ton a ton of money, money. they're both winners yeah, yeah. they're both winners yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, yes they're both winners and yada 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 my titan's gonna win these guys don't watch boxing like i watch boxing do you watch jake paul's boxing <laughs> you watch jake paul boxing I don't care about no Jay Paul. For one, Jay right. Paul fights scrubs. He doesn't fight real boxers. He, he because if he fought he real boxers, that's, that's that's why he's fighting a fifty-seven year old man now. That's why he's, okay. <laughs> like, oh, okay. He's fighting. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying like like oh, if he right. if he really wanted to be a fighter, he would fight somebody that's currently boxing. He would fight Ryan Garcia. He would fight Ryan Garcia or somebody or Shakur or somebody mm, like two that. Two different weight classes. He class. was a real boxer. Two different weight he, classes. He's, he's fighting YouTubers and, and washed up boxers and, and, and people who – he's fighting people who you know that he can – bro, he can pay off. I tell you like this. If, if, why, if Mike why. Tyson wins this – if Mike Tyson goes in and destroys him, I would be happy to lose this money. Like it, would, I, like I wouldn't even be mad. I want to see that, but logically, if I got a bet on it, I, I can't. I would do love it. to see Mike. Look, I would well, go, well, go ahead and send me my money right now. Then. How about that? We, we go ahead. We can skip past the process, and I can go ahead and get my money right now. The man lost mm -hmm. the one the one fight that he fought against a real boxer that is, I believe, is average. Is Tommy Fury and. Which is uh Fury? What's a uh, uh Fury uh first name? Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, younger brother, who I think is both of them overrated. To be honest, hmm. You we think Tyson Fury is overrated? Yeah, you think Tyson Fury overrated? Hmm. A little hmm. bit. Hmm. Okay. I think, I think I think Francis beat him in the last fight. 
like most experts believe that he lost, but that's a whole story. But his younger brother beat Jake Paul in the last fight, which I think he's not that good, and he's a natural boxer. So, did you? I don't watch, know, man. Did you watch Floyd versus uh, Connor? Yeah. This is what this reminds yes. me of, bro. This is this literally that's two different I, things. That's two different this things. This is a cash grab, bro. It's that, a that, cash is two, grab, that is two different bro. things. Con Conor McGregor is not a boxer. Okay, we know this. We know this. And and look, look, this He's is all doing something saying. that was naturally something he doesn't do. This he wanted to grab Floyd Mayweather and throw him like a rag dog. So you tell okay, okay, check this out. Who has more to lose in this fight? Tyson or Nick I mean or Jake Paul. Jake. Jake has more to lose in this fight. I'm telling you, dog. We we want to see Tyson at 57 yeah. go knock this kid out. I know. And bring him back down to reality. I think we all this, but it's not this simply as I it's something else I thought about that you got to put in the point that you got to make. They're wearing 18 ounce gloves. So, so they're basically going to be fighting in sparring gloves, right? They're not going to wear the light gloves where you can feel the fists. They're, they're wearing 18 ounce gloves. It's going to be tough for either of them to knock out the other person with one punch. Uh, you got to deliver a ton of punishment. I think Tyson can knock him out if he wants to. But it, is he going to? That's the thing, dude. Man, he's this dude is finna run around this ring. He knows who he's fighting. It's not like he's finna go in there. I don't think he's gonna go in there and try to prove that he can go toe to toe with Mike Tyson. Fam, this is not the same boxing that we grew up watching. This ain't the same. <laughs> no. This is not the same as when Mike was actually getting in there destroying these guys. This is not the sure. same boxing today. That it is, that it was back in the day, just like WWE. It ain't the same. They, it ain't like it was with WCW and WWE. It ain't the attitude. It ain't the attitude. It ain't the attitude. It, attitude. No, no, it no. has changed. Sure. Yeah. And the same thing has literally happened to boxing where it is different, man. It is it's so different. Yeah. You go this, jump in that in. This is, hey, look. <laughs> Risky. Hold on, which one? I WWE or boxing? To lose money. With a Jake Paul deal, I, 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 <laughs> I would love to lose that money, man. I would love but, to see yeah. Tyson going there and knock but, this kid out. Huh? Well, it's three to one right now. I let y'all have that, but when y'all see it, I want y'all to write letters to Mike Tyson and say sorry, Mr. Tyson, for disrespecting you. You need to go watch <laughs> some Jake Paul fights. That's I'm what I, I no want you to do. I'm not watching no Paul fights. Bro, he's fighting. His man is fighting middle school principals. He's fighting uh, a 57-year-old uh, old basketball player. <laughs> like, bro, wow. a washed-up USC fighter. And a 57-year-old like, boxer. And a washed-up 57-year-old former world champion. Let's just be no. real about it. Mike, Mike ain't the same Mike he used to be back in the okay, day. You, okay, Mike, Mike ain't the same. You go hop your happy-go-lucky ass and then let's see how I would never. Would. I'm just telling I'm putting you. The house on. I'm putting the house on Mike. Hey, hey I'm telling I, you, 18-ounce gloves matter, man. Matter, matter, that matters. Matter of fact, if they say if – my first punch would knock the haven out. I would bet the house on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I would bet the house on it. Why? All you gotta do is survive the first punch, bro. All you gotta do is survive the first punch. I, I, I think I can survive the first punch from Mike. I, what? I, 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 can, I can survive a Mike Tyson. At 57 when the years last old, time? I, I, yeah, I, I might, I might see some Sonic rings, oh, but I'll get God. right back up, <laughs> bro. Bro, listen here. I seen dudes on the street get knocked out by less. Ain't nobody taking <laughs> no punch from Mike Tyson. <laughs> it just gonna be like, oh, I just ate that punch, man. Please. <laughs> here's here's so the thing too. When when's the last time Mike Tyson took a punch? 
That's cool. When's the last time he got hit? Roy Jones. Roy Jones. Roy, Roy was so out of shape. That's cool. Yeah, he Roy had a big like belly. Look, cool. man. Look, hey, man. man. Look, bro. He's going. And that's I saw the Mike Tyson, um, uh, like the little training videos and stuff, and it's like, yeah, that that stationary bag don't move and it don't hit back. Like I, Floyd Mayweather was the he told he he exposed that in one of his videos when he was just looking in the camera doing the bag work. He was like, people show do this on YouTube just to show off. He's like, this don't mean nothing. This is a routine. Look, he looking so, straight. He looking straight at the yeah. camera. He's, he's like, this is not impressive. This is not real boxing. So I don't get impressed with that, man. Well, of course. <laughs> but like I, I said. I want Mike to win. We all do. Uh, listen, Mike, yeah, Mike, I would love to see that. Listen, Mike about to get a paycheck. Enough of this boss. Be ready, Mr. I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to happen. Just go ahead and give it up. So you think you're going to knock him out? Or you think you win the decision? I think you're going to knock him out. Everything changes. You're going to knock him out. Just like the rap game that changed. It ain't ain't the same as it used to be. Boxing changed. It ain't the same as it used to be. Your boy. How many many rounds, bro? It probably go five, five round, if that. Mm-hmm. Everybody I'll got to play. I tell hold you, what? Hold on. When you said the rap game, just to end it. Yeah. Since you talk about the rap game, what about the rap game? That is terrible. Um, I say this: it's not, it's not the talent, right? Because this is what this was happening in the rap game. Before you had to be able, you had to be on some type type of label. No, no, I, F all that. Who you who you think got bars out here, man? Who you think fight? Man, the talent, the talent. The... Who do I think got bars to this day? Uh, don't I name give, no J Cole. Don't name it. Don't name. No, I'm gonna say it. Dave East. I give Dave East his props for show. Sure. Ain't nobody listening oh. to Dave East, bro. I'm sorry. You, Shout out to Dave. You ask me who got bars. You well, well, who are you listening to that you think is fine? Dave East don't have bars. Is what we say. No, I'm that? saying ain't nobody <laughs> listening to Dave East. Just know you not listening no. to Dave East. Ted, do, but that's the reason. Ted, do you listen to Dave East? No, I don't. Nick, do you but, listen but, to Davies? But there's a reason for that, though. It's a reason for it. Hey, do you listen to Davies? Yeah, I like Davies. Name, bust it's out a rhyme of Davies right now. Man, I got a rap uh, different type Any of song. It don't matter. <laughs> I got a rap <laughs> different type of song. I'm not doing all this shit. <laughs> It's a reason I don't rap one of my bars I do that shit. Oh, no, I know, I know what bars you want to rap. Hey, look, we look, had this discussion look, one time. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say Go ahead. This. So, what I'm saying about rap. This is what I'm saying about the hip hop industry, bro. We know about the industry and stuff like that. I didn't want to know why it was trash, huh? We know about the labels and all that other stuff, bro. That, that a lot of these dudes are trash. They ain't got no talent, bro. I ain't gonna lie. If y'all really want a good laugh, I ain't gonna lie. This dude named Baby Kia. Yes, that's his name, Baby Kia. If you ever seen that Drewski skit. Uh, and Drewski was like, <laughs> "That's exactly how that nigga rap, bro. I'm not bullshitting, bro. That's exactly how that man raps." I was like, "Okay, this is where I get my laugh from. I am really entertained by this kid. Man. So whenever y'all get the chance, listen to Baby Kill." And I guarantee you're gonna be like, bro. I'm not listening to that, man. <laughs> and bro, I'm telling, bro, bro. The song is only like two minutes and some change. Two minutes yeah. and some change. This is all I'm saying. Man, the, game man. Is full of, the game is full of gimmicks now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have some type of gimmick about yourself to blow up in this industry that we grew up loving. You gotta. It's not just about. 
like prime example, four bats. If he didn't have the ski mask on with the high pitched voice, it wouldn't have hit like that. Like he, if he didn't put the ski mask, the shiesty on, it wouldn't be the same. It, with the gold grill, it, it's like, bro, you got to package it a certain type of ways for you to like blow up in this industry today. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the lyricism and the tap, you know, the talent that you got, you battle rapping. None of that matters like it used to matter. And now it's all these different platforms out here for artists to like blow up on, for artists to put their own stuff out just straight off the phone, bro, using United Masters, Distro Kid, things of that nature to blow up by themselves and organically go pay a uh, 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 pay somebody like an influencer to get on their, you know, in their algorithms. So all I'm saying is, bro, it's way different than it used to be where in the 2000s and the 90s, you had to really know how to rap. You had to really be talking about something or know how to put them words together, be crafty. It was more so about the lyricism. And now the lyricism is gone. It's all about the gimmick. So what I'm saying, boxing. That's, that's true. That's true. Boxing I don't, I don't, ain't really about who's more talented. It's more about the gimmick. It's more about, bro. Like, yeah. look at what's going on right now. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's about what I'm saying about more talent in the tank. The Jake, the Jake. This is what I'm talking about with the Jake Paul thing, right? I'm speaking solely on Jake right now. We can get into the Javante Davises and the other guys like that, but I'm speaking on Jake. If you watch Jake Paul's fights, bro, a lot of them fights, man, you can tell he's not supposed to win these fights, bro. You you can tell, bro. You it, it comes a point in the fight where it's like this man is supposed to be losing this fight, and he miraculously wins the fight. You said it yourself, Brinsky. You don't one. watch Jake Paul fights, Name so I'm trying one. to tell you, huh? Name one fight. Shit, bro. Uh, Any fight that he has fought, man, bro. Anderson I watched. Silver. I watched Silver. like probably three of his his past. He didn't three fight Anderson Silva. Who, huh? who? 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 Who's the who, who, the UFC guy? He said Anderson. He, who oh. he knocked out last? I don't know, man. He I don't want to think. Out 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 this man this knocked out of middle school. I don't, I don't watch Jake Paul, bro. I don't this personally, guys. Let me say this: I don't personally pay for his fights. I use the Dofu app. Number one, so man. I'm not gonna remember every last person he's fought. But the last three fights that I've watched of Jake, bro, I've I've tuned into the fights, bro, and Jake does not look like he's really winning these fights, bro. The dude or knock, he'll knock whoever out. He got to knock out. On some miraculous yeah. loss type BS, bro. It's it's crap. It's, it's crap boxing, bro. Hey, it's not here's the issue boxing. with that too. Here's the issue with that. That those fights that he fighting, right? Those people that he fighting, he's making more money. Those fights are grossing more money than real fighters. Than yeah. the Javante Davis fights. Like that. That's the point of it. It's like when Floyd Floyd was like, man, why would I go fight a real boxer? When I can just knock out none boxes and make way more money than I ever made in a boxing fight mm. in a, in a, against a real boxer, mm. like because they was asking him why would he come back? He like I make more money knocking out bombs than I do risking it against a real boxer, and that's the problem with this man. It's like it's they make too much money just to well this entertainment, bro. It's not real. Moral of the story, Mike Tyson going to win. I don't care about what y'all talking about. None of that BS. So, ladies and gentlemen, we came to the end of the pod because I got tired of hearing all this nonsense (laughs) about all these bull job bosses, about these trash ass rappers. This man just want to go, this man just want to go listen to his sexy red. That's what he want to go listen to right now. Get a big glow. <laughs> hey, I met with I, I met with glow. I ain't gonna lie. I met with glow. Really, man, you listen to Cha Cha? Nah, I ain't listen to that. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't listen to that. Nah, that was, uh, yeah. 
Nah. I, I give Glow a hard time on that one, bro. If I see it in person, yeah, I'm like, bro. Yeah, the problem is in the big one, me. Whoever said, hey, man, that five. Whoever said that was five in the studio, she need to let them go right there. Them damn, damn <laughs> boys. Stomping loop. Oh, the tail toe. Yeah, yeah. No. Well, her voice, bro. Like, her voice is, like, deep. Like, it's just... <laughs> Girl, just from Memphis, man. <laughs> As always. <laughs> We let one child brothers a shout out. Uh, Instagrams and all that good stuff. But we're going to say, we're going to let the guests go first. You already know, man. Nicholas. Yo, so again, man. Hey, man. Thank y'all so much, man. We appreciate y'all letting us come over here and uh, chill with y'all tonight, man. Of course, we are the Water Cooler Talk podcast, the coolest podcast in Yo, ear man, we here every Wednesday, man. So go check out the video we just dropped today, man. We talked a little bit about free agent frenzy, so man, go listen to that. Um, you can watch us on YouTube, man. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel, Water Cooler Talk Podcast, or you can listen to us on your favorite podcast player if you like listening to podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or uh Apple Podcasts. You can go listen to us there, man. Man, we appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh Dope, man. We enjoy coming over here when we get a chance to, man. It's all fun. So appreciate it, man. You know, yeah. Shout out to Marcus since he had to, yeah, he had to leave about, early. He had to leave early. So tuck them kids in, <laughs> little guy. <laughs> <laughs> man, you already know what's going on. It's your boy the Haven, aka DJ Ghost Plato, man. In the mix. Atlanta's man. biggest fan. Hey, man, shout out to the Braves, man. You already know we're going to do big things this year, man. It's that time, you feel me? So, yeah, man, it's your boy again. Follow me on all major platforms. Hey, right here, DJ Ghost Play, though. Mm -hmm. All that, Apple Music, everything. I holla at your boy. And, you know, we're doing it again, big. Another week, we here. We still standing strong. Shout out to the Sharp Shooters Podcast and my boy, B Sharp. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You heard him. Yeah, Tez. You get that proto imagery yeah, right there. <laughs> All platforms. I think I finally got it right. There you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to the pod, B Shaw, for having me. Uh, you know, this is become home for me now. It seems like. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but I I enjoy it, man. Thank you for having me again. Uh, shout out to the Auburn Tigers. Get that boy, baby. War down. Yeah, down, uh, baby. Ooh. On our way yeah, to an NCAA pick, pick championship. <laughs> yeah. On our yeah. way to an NCAA championship. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it, man. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry you had to hear that. But as always, I am Brisk. <laughs> I am Brisk Shaw of the Sharp Shooters Podcast. We drop usually every Wednesday, but of course, it's Thursday, so we're going to drop this one. Uh, appreciate everybody for their support. On the road to 500 subs. Uh, we're moving up fast. Shout out to uh, everybody that's uh, been supporting. Keep liking, coming, and please keep subscribing, watching the videos and all that good stuff. Please make sure you go over and watch all the water cooler talk podcast please support those guys they're doing great things proud supporter right here great to call them friends and you won't miss out on any great content over there and i got a big announcement again and this one is even bigger you know when i said i wanted to interview spike lee You remember when I said I wanted to interview Spike Lee? It's a reason why Spike Lee's birthday is today. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a very, very special guest that just dropped in. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Spike Lee. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, I was looking at y'all faces, man. Oh, no, man. One day, one day, man. One day, one day. Like oh, no, nah, man. We, we, he doing something, man. But no, nah, I, I ain't got them type of connections yet. 
Not not, not yet, yet, man. Not, not yet. yet. But one day. But appreciate everybody for showing love to the pod as always and forever. Fuck all 